and there we are, started again. Welcome. It's been a while. It's been over a month <laughs> since the last episode. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, if you're catching up on YouTube, thank you for being patient as I've completely forgotten to post the last episode until a couple of days ago, or maybe yesterday. Um, <clears throat> who knows? Who knows? This is Legend of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. Uh, that's probably what it's going to be for a while. We may have a few diversions in 2020, we're not really sure. It's the end of this year, not the end of this campaign. we got a lot to do yet before that's going to happen. Uh, but welcome. Uh, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Uh, that's, I guess, my name. I always kind of find it weird to say that out loud, but it's what I've used for 20 years, so I guess I should be used to it by now. It's official now. Oh! Oh no. What? 30 years. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that's a little bit disturbing. In any case, uh, these are my players who've unwittingly joined me on this crazy journey into this homebrew world. Uh, how about I get them to introduce themselves? We'll start over here for once. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just to <laughs> Hi, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Zacchaeus, half elf wizard, who is right here. Right. Map Standing in the void. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Before the game's like loaded. And, yeah, I forget what we were doing on, on our way to see the Great Wizard Patoro. Well, no. We're, we're going to uh, do a little recap at the beginning here and get the scene set back up. Because i got to remember what's going on, too. Uh, I'm Pat, playing uh, Amun Elisar, uh, the Wood Elf Cleric, who's just finished undiseasing a bunch of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it was disease and other things as well. And curses. And curses. Curses. Uh, I'm Jody. I'm uncursed, and I play Clark, the fighting rogue half orc. And uh, things are turning in his world, and we'll see where they turn next. I'm Marie. I play Elzara, the Wood Elf Druid, who I literally don't know what form I'm in right now. <laughs> Hashtag Druid problems. <laughs> I I did not I did not write anything. I think you were uh, you were you were you. I think you were humanoid because you switched back to cast a couple of spells. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we will we will catch up with the present. Uh, I want to say hey to Don. Uh, the Don is watching. Hey Don. Don. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. I think your game is canceled today, uh, so you <laughs> get some free time. So appreciate it. Appreciate it absolutely for all the people who do watch. Um, and we will try to get to a more regular schedule for people to actually play uh, along at home. The home game is exciting. You don't even get a chance to roll dice or say anything. But anyway. Get the other players there. when they make dumb decisions, and by that I mean mainly me during combat. Well, I mean we can <laughs> we can just uh, imagine them yelling at the screen. <laughs> so yes, we need to uh, move our minds back to the world of the shadow, which is this strange, terrible nether realm beyond the uh, the actual drowned isles themselves, the world of Omasha, where you uh, most of you have been spending a considerable amount of time. How much time? Impossible to evaluate. Uh, because there's no day, there's no night, there's no change of any kind. It does not appear that this place has any notion of time. And that's been something that's been difficult for you to deal with. How long have you been away from the home you know so well? Almost impossible to tell, except for the arrival of one of your friends. Amrun Elisar, the first priest of the new church of Paluxia, or whatever titles you end up <laughs> settling on and as the game goes on, who appeared through a strange interdimensional transfer in the temple of Namazani, one of the few recognizable features of this land of shadow, this land of pain and uh, kind of transformation. At least you're starting to realize that might have been some of its original intention, but now seemingly more a land of stagnation. Because the ruler of this land, a demon lord named Peturo, seems to have forsaken his duties, or perhaps he's unable to perform them. You've heard more and more about Peturo, some of you hearing that name a long time ago, uttered by one gnome named Susuro, someone who had been a thorn in your side for a while, an opponent for a while, and yet seemed to have his own goals. The last thing you remember him saying was, why have you forsaken me, Peturo, as he was destroyed, presumably, from your realm, maybe to appear again somewhere else. By he, his own doing. By his own doing, indeed. <laughs> Most recently, after reuniting with Amrun, 
who also discovered the precious cargo that you carry. This strange, glowing, carved bone, massive, as tall as any one of you, and extraordinarily heavy. The bone, supposedly, of the goddess Poluxia, who had been killed over a thousand years ago. The bones turning up in this realm in numerous places. Most uh, prominently, you saw one embedded in the back of a giant stone behemoth that came to quell a riot where a demon had appeared in Withergate mysteriously some time ago. How that happened? No one knows. Well, maybe a few people have an idea. Also with you, a temporary ally, a winged demon herself, Azkazix, here to broker a deal. Her master, the Lord Baturo himself, requested your presence to help. That was a strange turn of events, but it did seem as though Iskazix was dedicated to helping you. You were ambushed not long after leaving the Temple of Demosne before her transport could show up. Another demon and his cohorts attempted to steal the now-revealed bone of Poluxia having taken it out of its somewhat secure home inside a rather stretched bag of holding, which it itself yeah, did not really survive the process. However, fix it later. after that battle was over, it's the... <laughs> it's well gone now. After that battle was over, the transport that was described arrived, turning out to be another one of those behemoths. This one outfitted to carry people. Two platforms, one on its back, one on its chest, and two chairs attached to its stony shoulders. It stood several stories tall, and was a rather impressive sight. You loaded yourselves up on it, uh, as Kazix also sat on board, and you loaded the now revealed pillar. Ironically, not far away from the pillar embedded in its own back, another one of the bones of Galaxia. Onward you sped. And the reason in part for this particular version of transport is that raging across the shadow right now is a battle. You saw glimpses of it as you traveled, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it because you'll see a few more glimpses as you travel again. Open warfare. Demons fighting other demons. Dwarves and gnomes and a few, uh, a few halflings engaged in a battle. Also some demons on that side. Giant uh, demons you'd seen before. The sort of toad-headed demon you'd seen uh, summoned a long time ago uh, by uh, Bone Twitch. One or two of those you've seen around the field. It might be the same one. It's hard to tell because the fog of war is thick with, uh, with acid and with other disturbances. Fire and smoke. Those ones were carrying massive drums that every time they beat them, uh, a wave of energy would spiral outward towards it, and you could see the, the uh, fight being pushed backward. Uh, actually, one of the things you would have made out about that, uh, uh, just from your general sense of Arcana and what's going on, every time one of those drums beat, a massive wave of disruption of magical energy even was emitted, causing most of the weapons that were being used to become useless. Some even were destroyed, even if they were made from soul stones themselves. But midway through this, midway through this transition from one place to another, presumably towards Ember Skull, the seat of Lord Paturo, where the two glowing uh, eyes, the two glowing orbs, sit in a massive skull at the far end of the shadow, itself some sort of strange cave-like realm. Passing by, you can see just slightly now, inside and caged, engulfed by the festering forest, is one tree you know to be not only safe, but remarkably familiar to some. That being Yggdrasil, the world's tree, now reborn. But you can almost not see it. The festering has grown up around it again. But... But I know exactly where it is. You know exactly where it is. That extra sense coming from both your physical connection from the ring that was gifted to you, but also the inner part of your soul, bonded to it forever bonded to your once dead, now possibly reborn fiancé. But one barrier stood in your way, the Grey Brook, 
which you've now come to understand is not merely water, not merely brackish gray uh, sludge, but in fact a living organism, if you will, a spawning pool of the illithid, strange small creatures swimming within, ready to burrow into anyone who might pass through and use them as a host for future breeding. Some of you have become exposed to it before, in particular uh, uh, Zakas having gotten infected and was released by a strange fey being who helped him remove the uh, necessary, uh, remove the unnecessary uh, parasite from within. That being Finn the Whistler, who you met as Corrin, a uh, protector of a strange tower, the inverted tower of Emerald Emekir. But the Grey Brook houses many dangers, and there was one safe passage across it, a great ancient bridge which undoubtedly is how many of the armies had been flowing in towards the, uh, the area where Arvax was taking up residence. Arvax being a demon you had seen try to infest your own world at one point, and apparently coming from here trying to overthrow the shadow. But the bridge was destroyed, taken out, possibly by the armies, possibly just by the Greybrook itself. Undaunted, the behemoth ran faster, and then leapt, and would have cleared the Grey Brook by a comfortable margin if tentacles had not reached out from it. A crazed, strange, large, corrupted creature reached out and dragged it down within the Grey Brook. Buried up to its stomach, the attack began in earnest. It was held down by multiple tentacles, and more of the illithid were revealed, trying to drag you into the water. Some of you fell into the water briefly. Others managed to avoid that fate, but still found yourselves under attack. The fight was tough for some of you. In particular, Askazix suffered a pretty bad pair of symptoms. And one of your cameras is just... Cameras are working and everything is fine. Nothing fine. fine, nothing to see here. Fine. We're all fine. How are you? How are you? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, we were still in the midst of, uh, of the recap, and I will try to make the rest of this somewhat brief. As the battle itself raged, but was eventually successful. The creature beaten, uh, and in fact, the behemoth itself uh, managing to uh, release most of the tentacles it had held to it. Afterwards, it climbed its way out. You all took a moment to recover. Some of you having fallen into the water and were beginning to show the early signs of infection. But thankfully, Amrun, being on hand, was able to deal with that. However, there was one unexpected side effect. Mm -hmm. Clark, who had accepted a burden, accepted a scar, mm -hmm. one which had transformed him, causing one of his eyes to go milky, and I believe yellow, but which had also given us somewhat of an additional change. Wobbly legs. And also was having some difficulty <laughs> moving quickly, yes. Welcome back to the, uh, the normal speed. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. But having been recovered, and also having um, accepted once again, at least for the moment, the weapon of Marius, mm. the Reaper's Blade. Of which I don't have, by the way. You don't have the sheet? I think, I think you do. And now I gotta find the sheet. That's okay. <laughs> it was being updated, I believe. It, it it was. I thought I had updated and handed it back to you. One moment, please. It, it's. Uh, uh, we I'm won't be you. We yeah. won't be using it this yeah, session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Right. <laughs> I believe that's the. That's a big version. sheet. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. If you want to hand that over, oh, reach it there. This strange, shadowy weapon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah viewed with the power of Marius, the trickster god himself. Mm. Or, or not. possibly something else. Yeah. It's hard to say. Once more, though, you reassemble on the, on the top of this behemoth. And while it has suffered some damage, and despite uh, uh, Alzara's efforts to repair it, uh, still seems to be somewhat damaged, uh, you were able to continue on. And it continued on the same pace. Slightly worrying, 
as some of the larger and maybe more jolting steps do seem to knock a few more stones free here and there. Uh, it's not in the same condition it was when it started, but hopefully that's not going to matter. I remember I didn't even transform less last nope. combat because yeah. I made a point of it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought at one point you had, but I nope. I, I, I nope. Could be wrong. Cause, cause I made a point of just not wanting to. Mm-hmm. Yep. Save just it spells for later. and bow shots. Uh, one other thing of note um, was a surprise to Clark. Mm. Most no, wouldn't wouldn't have noticed it. Having worn the death box for years, you kind of are used to the shift in weight that happens when it makes its transference. And not long after the the Yggdrasil world's tree was reborn, you felt that shift again. But you haven't had a chance to check it. It's true. There is a note. I know that much, but I, we haven't had a chance to read it. That's right. Now, probably somewhat on alert and hearing the sounds and the sights and the, even the smells of battle up ahead. You're all a little bit more wary, perhaps, than when you started. Asgazix is scanning ahead, her weapon already drawn, ready to fight if necessary. Although the behemoth turns away from this sort of northwestern direction to turn more northward, straight towards the Ember Skull itself, and starts charging in that direction. You can have a conversation if you'd like. It's a little loud, but if you'd like to catch up on anything or ask any questions, now might be the time. Or not. <laughs> I mean, I think we we're... I, I don't remember the order, but I believe we were, like, kind of separated, too, because mm-hmm. you yeah, went was, up on, on the shoulder. Yeah, two in front, two in the back or something? Yeah, you yeah, can hold up to six people. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it, there's a platform in the back. I think that's where Clark was. Yep. I think that's also where yeah. the pillar was. Mm, yeah. No, the, the well, pillar was in a sort of little pocket. Yeah. Yeah, effectively, those are the pockets. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were in the front, he was in the back, and you were on, on one of the seats on the shoulder, shoulder I think, on with uh, Azkazix on the other yeah, shoulder. And, I had a and, minor, a, and a rail. If I yeah, I had a done minor conjuration to, like, generate right. a rail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can hold on and look now, instead of panicking the entire time it's, and falling. It's a lot more secure now. They don't seem to have seat belts in this particular version. I could have just minor conjured a seat belt. That's true. Oh, well, next time. More likely just a rope, because yeah. seat belts don't exist in general, but... Someone will make a fortune. All right. Mm. Well, finding yourselves with nothing to say. So it's almost like we all have like a illithid water parasite PTSD or something. It's <laughs> quite slimy, and you having remembered specifically how it went the last time you got infected, have, don't have a real uh, interest in, in necessarily getting involved with that again. But the battle rages. Moving off to your left now as you're passing by that field into the incredible speed that this thing is able to achieve. The landscape hasn't changed all that much. Still the sort of blasted uh, red stone and sand and dirt. That ever-present light coming from nowhere in particular. Never very bright, never very dark, but never very comfortable either. You pass by a troop of dwarves who are running towards the battle themselves uh, carrying whatever weapons they can, most of them crude, uh, tied up with black rope that all of you would recognize is actually probably their own beards and hair. Nothing else seems to grow all that strongly here. The axes are crude, made out of stones and little more. Swords, it's hard to call that a sword when it's really little more than a carved rock. Still impressive, still showing that dwarven craftsmanship, but there's something strange about their formation. They seem to be almost running in a hide-and-seek tactic, something you wouldn't expect in open warfare. It's like they're not used to this terrain. You continue to move along. Another half an hour passes. The Ember Skull looms ahead. And now you truly get a sense of scale of this thing. The two eyes that glow and can be seen from anywhere within the shadow must be 10, 15 feet tall for each of those eyes. The skull itself hovers 100 feet in the ground, pinned up by two pillars of stone that seem to have been 
crafted a long time ago, but have seen the weather of age, is that appropriate here? Maybe actually fighting. They come right to the gates of Ember Skull. So you get the skull's 100 feet high, or the skull's 100 feet up? It's 100 feet up. Okay. Uh, the eye sockets are about 10 to 12 feet in, in height. Yep. So the entire skull is probably itself another 40 feet, maybe 50 feet. And as you get closer, it does appear to actually be a skull. Carved in patterns of sweeping water. In patterns of rising oceans. In patterns of wind and even trees. As you get closer and closer, Amrun, there can be no doubt in what you're feeling. Mm. A sense of familiarity, a sense of that special connection that occurs for you from time to time when you are in contact with the god you've chosen to serve. That is of Paluxia. The bone that you're carrying has felt somewhat of that, but this one feels more vital somehow. It feels more, more alive, and yet obviously not. I think I know what happened. Remember that they said they they killed Palexia and thought she was gone. Mm -hmm. They defeated her and threw her here. So she's. That's why her presence has been gone. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she could be brought back. Don't tell Emerald I said any of this, by the way. I'm wondering if the skull can be turned into a giant flying ship. Don't tell my god that I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> Says it out loud. <laughs> well, it can animate the giant golems. Uh, speaking of which, Askazix. Yes? Could a smaller golem be animated with pieces of bone? Why would you make a smaller one? Uh, or not even golems, devices. There's one thing I'm thinking of back at the library that could be automated by a power source. I do not know how these things work. You're not using the bones of my god to power your printing press. Just a little one. Although a proof of concept. No, it, it's a perfectly good thought, but no, not to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know Someone how these powers sure. work. I have been told that it is vital. Not in the sense of it being essential, but in the sense that it is of life. Mm. Mm -hmm. these, these pillars give life to these things. If your thing needs life, then... I suppose it might work. But I do not know of any way to leave this realm. I've heard... Well, I've seen people do it. We'll find a way. Trust me. Perhaps. And she seems... not entirely pleased with the notion that there might be ways to escape. If there are now ways in, then there are almost undoubtedly ways out. Then we will make sure that they are destroyed. Uh, no yeah. one leaves here except for what is appropriate and only what the Lord Paturo deems is appropriate. Well then, if we find a, if we think of any way or manage to find a way to leave this place, we'll let you know, so after we leave, the way can be closed. Are you lying? <laughs> if so, somebody <laughs> needs to make a roll. <laughs> I don't want to mention the tree, but I'm thinking about the tree. <laughs> yeah. Well, the tree is fairly obvious as well, right? But, um, but uh, are, how are you, what are you trying to do with that? Are you trying to deceive? Are you trying to I'm persuade? trying to uh, make sure we can leave, basically. Because okay. <laughs> if Pichiro just, like, decides to, like, no, you can't, like... I mean, Although, we're not uh, supposed to be here in the first yeah. place, to be fair. By leaving, we're just restoring the balance. Okay. Well, she seems, uh, she raises an eyebrow at you, kind of trying to figure out what the hell you mean. Um, but then slowly nods. Your information would be useful. It always is. Um, are, are we there yet? But I believe the Lord Paturo has plans for you. Uh, and as you move closer and closer, you notice that below the skull, which is only the upper part of the skull, the mandible itself is, is not there, um, are massive doors made out of that same stone. And as the behemoth starts to to continue barreling up a, a slight uh, uh, ramp essentially which is built up towards the doorway and checks his phone for messages <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing down at all it doesn't seem that Azkazix is all that worried about it um, but you're not exactly sure if it has the ability to stop 
Just gonna hold on to the guardrail. I'll try to make it really obvious so she like slows it down. Yeah. Um, it's going a little fast. I'm going to curl up and go ball on my seat. So if it does hit the doors, they will hopefully blow open and I will go through them. <laughs> okay. Uh, you notice. I'm, I'm like, hold on. You kind of notice that. Um, for those of you who are kind of riding on top, it's easier to notice as the whole upper body shifts forward a little bit. And for Clark in particular, this is a tackling sort of technique. Right. Which, again, concerns you a little bit. Clark would like to say uh, for everyone to brace. Okay. If that's, if that's a thing he can do. All right. With the platforms, they are they are kind of box platforms. They do have they do have thin walls mm. on on each side. Uh, as it as it uh, bends down a little bit and it raises its massive arms up in front of it, and just starts barreling towards the door. I would like all of you uh, to make a uh, athletics or acrobatics. If you're planning to ride it out, it's acrobatics. If you're planning to brace, that's athletics. You do you get advantage over because you were forewarned to brace. Right. Okay, I will do acrobatics because that's my better one. <laughs> ah. So eighteen and a five. So I, I like the advantage. I'll take the okay. get nineteen total. Nineteen. All right. It's uh, all about the guardrail. I got a twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. And I got a twenty-nine. 20, only got a twenty-nine. <laughs> uh, I love rogues. The acrobatics boys. or athletics? So, so ten. Uh, that was athletics. He's hanging so, on. So yeah. you're hanging on for your, you've got a ten with what? Uh, acrobatics. Acrobatics. You got a twenty-three. Twenty-three with oh. acrobatics. Acrobatics. Nineteen acrobatics. I say so. Acrobatics and one person just sort of. You probably one person actually has a strength above ten. You, you probably <laughs> kind of lean back a bit. You put your feet up against the the thing itself, so you're kind of solidly locked in position. Um, as uh, up on top of the shoulder, you're kind of like. Glad I made this thing, yeah. uh, and kind of, but loosely holding on so that you're not going to be thrown. Uh, and on the other side, you see Azkazix just simply extend her wings and push backward as it as it comes in collision with the doors and actually flies backward uh, off of the thing. <laughs> she may not have been expecting exactly that, but she was prepared. Can it just knock? As the doors are thrust inward. Uh, and uh, there's a massive collision of stone on stone as they are pushed inward. Um, as they are, you also kind of see on the inside that stones were piled up against the inside of this door. It would not have opened on its own. Um, so effective. So it, nor, <laughs> quite effective except for something which is 100 feet tall and made of solid stone. Yeah. Uh, on the back, however, uh, you find yourself kind of jettisoned forward up and kind of onto the crudish head of this thing and kind of sprawl over the top of it and dangling a bit as it's now uh, tilted almost all the way over. Um, on the other side, you see two more of these things kind of move over to the sides as it's now come to a, come to a stop in a pile of rubble as they push the giant doors back closed again, which drag across the floor and start piling up stones. Can I have ejected out and landed. Uh, you got a good enough roll, sure. When it got flip? down to the lower level, you're able to to kind of leap on beyond her, kind of holding on. Well, I just I just let myself get shot out of the chair, and I flip. And you said the thing's like 100 feet tall, so mm -hmm. uh, it will trigger the uh, the feather fall it absolutely in the would. thing. Yep. And I float to the ground. It's like, uh... <laughs> how many flips do you do? Roll. Just the one. Okay. I'm not that good. <laughs> As Azkazix kind of flies through before the doors are closed and uh, and kind of comes in. I'm just like, a little bit of help here. Yeah. And you see the, <laughs> as you see the massive hand of the behemoth reaching back towards its head. <laughs> Clark just watches. <laughs> it's, it's rocky hands kind of fold in together and very carefully kind of grabbing you first by the head and then kind of broadening out a little bit <laughs> the shoulders. I'll, I'll kind of, well, if I'm on the shoulder, can I reach it? Or? Uh, yeah, but you're kind of strapped in and kind of dangling a little bit because it's kind of leaned right. over a bit. Uh, but you can, you can. It's it's about five feet away from you. Okay. Uh, I'll dismiss the uh, guardrail and just grab onto one of the fingers and okay. hold on the uh, way down. That's an acrobatics check for it. sure. There's wow! I'm rolling. A, nice. I like this dice. I'm keeping it. So 19. Okay. Uh, you kind of 
You remember seeing Vrinwick move yes. on occasion <laughs> and how he was able to seemingly defy everything. And you go, okay, he would do a step here and here and then jump. Huh. And as its fingers closed down on, on Elzera, a little roughly, but trying clearly not to crush you utterly, uh, it kind of plucks you off of its head and you grab onto one of the fingers and start uh, being let lowered down. It kind of looks and you get the sense that it's like, that was not there before, Hi. looking at you. And there's almost a moment of, am I going to flick it off? Whatever. The, no, wait, I'll put this down. <laughs> and you can see them, it kind of gently lowering them down to the mm -hmm. ground on the other side. Are you climbing out of the... That sounds like it's a good opportunity to disembark. Yeah. You're still about 40 feet up from right. where it is right now. Uh, you can probably climb down it if you wanted to. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, uh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, no, it was kind of in a niche. So uh, up on its right shoulder, uh, you actually see the glowing of the pillar, which kind of slipped upward a little bit, mm -hmm. but kind of caught on some of the, some of the rocks that were there. Uh, it reaches back a second time after it's dropped them off and kind of plucks it and sets it down beside yeah. you easily, setting it there as it kind of thudunk lands on the ground, being actually as dense as it is. That looks like a way down, so if Clark can... Ah, okay. Ride that bus. Yeah, make well. an acrobatics check. Sure. Grab onto the, the other bus. All right. <laughs> uh, acrobatics, uh, 18. Yeah, no problem. Okay. It's moving slowly enough. Um, it's just kind of like moving from one platform to another. Uh, and it's not trying to move out of the way. Uh, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even kind of notice you there. Uh, and it's easy enough to grab on. Um, as you come closer to the pillar, you can kind of feel its energy vibrating even stronger than it was before. And mm. maybe the glow is stronger, or maybe it's just dimmer in here. It's hard to tell. Around you, you see the piles and piles of rocks, and there's a massive amount of noise as the two other behemoths are now rolling boulders and rocks back to, to block that door. From what you've seen or what you've heard of stories of castles under siege, Blocking those doors means they have no other way of defending themselves. There's no way they could get out rapidly. And they can't even pull the things away fast enough. The, st the stones of the doors are, are thick and strong enough that they could withstand the behemoth uh, crashing into them. Uh, but that's an extraordinarily crude uh, and simple but effective way of generally keeping things out. This area looks like a grand foyer almost. High ceilings, you are inside now of this building. High ceilings made of stone. Uh, again, may have been carved in much more um, detail at one point, but now seem to be mostly turning to dust. Crumbling away after aeons, perhaps, of disuse. Uh, some do some signs of battle in here as well, pockmarks in the walls and stones that have been brought down, although some of them probably were brought down to reinforce the front door. Along the walls, though, every, every 30 feet or so in this gigantic 100-foot uh, long uh, uh, entryway, you do see pillars like the one you're holding, but several conjected, uh, conjoined together to form a, a line of pillar in the wall that the only untouched thing by age and again the carvings upon those now seem to be linked somewhat uh, uh, between the different bones almost as though they were put in place first and carved as a single piece of art uh, and then for whatever reason occasionally removed um, the behemoth turns and starts to help its friends reassemble the menagerie at the door as Kazix li li uh, lands beside you it is worse than I had suspected if this is what they are doing. This was not here before I left. Which, what was not here? The piles of rocks blocking the doors? There were other defenders. More of them. And she gestures towards the behemoths. Okay. There were at least a half a dozen. Now there are only three. Do you think they may be elsewhere? Still functional? They may be fighting in the field. Or they may have fallen. If they fall, the pillars, they fall in enemy hands? Or do they get she, destroyed somehow? She bristles a bit. I have seen them disappear. I only hope that that is the case. Good. To be found again, I suppose. 
So who is attacking this fortress? From what I understand, it is Arvax and his forces making a play for the physical location, although much of the outer world seems to be already under their sway. I do not know much about that. My Lord Paturo will explain, no doubt, and why he has asked you here. He has, as he kind of grimaces to even use the word, he has hope that you can aid him. Oh, we'll do our best. Right, guys? Sure. Let's, let's go meet him. Um, just random housekeeping question. You have your bag of holding, right? Mm-hmm. Could I have overnight put my stuff that I've been carrying on my back in your bag? Sure. Cool. Right, there's <laughs> not a huge amount of stuff in mine. It's mostly small stuff, so... Yeah. yeah M- mine is also things. mostly small stuff. It's just a lot of small stuff, like clothes and... Yep. Stuff Shouldn't like that that have been packed into two book bags. Yeah, it's it's one thing we probably should have remembered is that you're kind of wearing an adventuring kit on your back. <laughs> uh, kind of yeah. the, the the rail pack and all that Th- stuff. That's why my brain was like, I'm on un- I am covered in stuff. <laughs> Some of it might have gone flying when you did, so yeah. maybe knock off a couple of small items that uh, But 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 no that that's why I'm oh, overnight, oh, right, like overnight. the night that's before. Right. That's right. That that, that, that's why I meant more like housekeeping like I'm sure, sure everyone wouldn't have let me like walk around with a pile of stuff as big as Yeah, I and he would have he would have cleaned your clothes before we put in them and put them in. <laughs> it's like, oh, they were covered in in uh, Yeah, they were covered in itty bitty creepy things. <laughs> <laughs> Literally doing housekeeping now. Um, (laughs) As she leads you down one of the four tunnels you see here, one of the tunnels has collapsed, you can see, just inside. The opening is still there, a grand arch. Again, showing some style, showing that this place had once been magnificent, maybe, which doesn't entirely fit with your sense of the shadow or anything here so far. Are we in the skull yet, or are we still below the skull? The skull was over the entrance. So they, they, oh, so, well, so we're in a building that so has a skull in the up building. Front. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can still kind of orient yourself from it, although you also see these bones in the walls. And for you, there's a weird moment where you're almost thinking of it as a rib cage. Mm. You're inside. But spread out. So you would be somewhere around the central organs at this point. If... if Anatomy kept the same for beings of that stature, which is impossible to say. I'll ask this you, is a little weird. Asking Askazix, has this destruction been here only recently? This destruction? I believe that occurred a long time ago. But I cannot tell you when. All right. I do not pay attention to this part. I spend most of my time elsewhere and she looks uncomfortable where's that I spend it more harvesting from the umbral nest the umbral nest where the dragons are well the dragons left through the uh, through the tree where the dragons used to be (laughs) no they were they were in the uh, the festering forest so the umbral nest you've only seen it from a distance as a sort of massive Almost, uh, almost like a maelstrom, a white maelstrom, way to the south. Um, we haven't met that fact. Okay. Yet. And yeah, you haven't you haven't <laughs> encountered anything of that. Before. Gotcha. For some I, reason, I thought the yeah. I, I remember you saying that that's where Givenetta stayed. She had been there. Okay. But but she had been patrolling the festering forest. Yeah. And the festering forest regrew fast enough that even when she was flying through and crushing branches, it would grow back up behind her. Mm-hmm. Um, so she wasn't permanently there, or you're not really sure exactly where she permanently was. But she definitely had been in the umbral nest at some point. Because uh, that's where people had pointed us to where they were. Mm. Okay. It is definitely of concern to a lot of people. All right. But yes, I do not make it back here, except, of course, at Lord Paturo's bidding. So what? But it has been a while. Okay. What goes on in the Emerald Nest? Well, I'm asking her these questions as we're walking along, too. Like. It is a place of lost souls. And I have been tasked with recovering those that seem like they can be usefully recovered. Okay. And perhaps 
putting others to rest, those that cannot be reborn. Not that anyone has been reborn in a while. So do you make the judgment call between which ones are useful and which ones aren't, or is there some kind of process? She kind of slows down and turns to you with a very steady look. I do. Cool. And she <laughs> looks very steadily at you for a moment. Cool. Tilts her head a little cool, bit. Cool, cool, cool. And nods. Cool, cool. And then turns back. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of get the sense that she may have just judged your soul, which is a little bit unnerving, perhaps, yeah. or perhaps useful. The second one. <laughs> it's like, I want to ask more questions, but I also, like, it's getting awkward now. I feel like you should shut up. <laughs> so I guess never feels like you should shut up. <laughs> the hallway... The tiny voice. <laughs> the hallway is wide. And along the way, uh, less frequently than what you would have seen in the, in the grand foyer, you again see small bones off to one side or the other. This time, there is a ridge line of bones above you that spans the entire hallway. It itself, though, obscured by stone, almost as though additional um, additional arches or supports had been placed in. Uh, on the side, you see carved uh, these, these images. Most of them are abstract. Um, I believe you speak Infernal and yeah. read it. Both. So to you, you are starting to uncover that within all of this is actually written script. That you find a little distracting as you're as you're uh, asking along. I don't know if anyone else. I speak celestial, but that's it. So, on the opposite wall, um, you actually recognize celestial symbols. Strangely enough, and completely out of place for a place like this. Huh? There's celestial over here. Really? Cool. Yeah. There's infernal on that one. Interesting. As you compare notes, you find that they're they're more or less saying the same thing. Um, it is an ode to unity of a strange sort of sense, a, a philosophical text. Long stretch for to get anything more than a paragraph as it's written in large letters and, uh, and uh, written kind of one or two lines, interwoven as well with the, the, the images that are there. So sometimes you have to kind of make it out a little bit and occasionally broken uh, as the, the wall itself or stone itself has been collided with or perhaps accidental, perhaps it was a, an attack. In a couple of spaces, even almost like it's been crossed out, as though either it was disagreed with or uh, something was be meant to be put in its place. But it speaks about unity and rebirth. It speaks about uh, cohesion of the soul. It speaks about the essence of life. It's not complete. And you get the sense that perhaps each of the hallways contains something different. Maybe another part of the same thing, or maybe the missing pieces that you're not getting from this one. Crap, one of the hallways was smashed. It was. After about 15 minutes of walking down this long hallway, it opens to a larger room. This room would dwarf some of the islands you've been on hundreds of feet across, perhaps even thousands of feet. It's impossible to tell the full distance. A large, open, cavern-like room, all again made from that gray stone, or that, uh, sorry, brown or red stone. Um, again, showing signs it had been carved, but now more deliberate strokes seem to have been cut through those carvings, almost as though the very sight of it was pain-inducing, the way you might tear out a, a poster on a wall that you don't like anymore, or throw darts at someone. Someone's picture, I should say. You might throw darts at someone. You have their proficiencies. <laughs> but at the far end of this room sits a massive throne. Easily 400 feet tall at the, for the throne itself. A throne Whoa. made of stone. And seated on that throne is a figure. Humanoid figure deep red in skin. Although, as you get closer and closer, you start to realize that the red is almost an illusion as the skin is cut through with hundreds, thousands, millions of small scars. Many of them seeping blood or seeping liquids of other kinds. Many of them appearing even as you get closer. 
appearing to cut even across other scars from nothing at all. The humanoid figure uh, appears to be male, it does not seem to have a shirt, although there are tatters of clothing, or tatters of cloth that seem to stretch across them. So we're in pants or a robe or? Um, the knees seem to be bare, but there does seem to be some sort of uh, short, uh, 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 what would be called, I forget the name of it, but basically a, kilt, a, a skirt. kind of a kilt, yeah. Not a Scottish kilt, more of an Arabic kilt um, of, of light fabric um, that almost seems to, again, uh, be a slightly in tatters. Um, the person sitting there is sitting with hands on the arms of the, of the chair that are up in front. The face looking steadily forward, a muscular body, a, a strong, rigid face, a very strong chin, uh, two curved horns running from the top of his head and then curving upward beyond. You can see curled behind them on the throne appear to be large bat-like wings folded. You can make out small holes though in them. And you also get a little confused by the flurry of motion that seems to be happening as you, as you then, as you get closer, notice small imps moving all around, occasionally tending to the wound, sometimes tearing them open larger, sometimes even moving like, like flies on a dead animal, burrowing into the skin and appearing somewhere else later. How large is this figure? The throne itself is about 400 feet tall and it's seated. So it's it's a massive it, giant of a person. Yeah, seems to be. Okay, yeah, it's it, not just so, a giant high chair. Right. Okay. No, good. it yeah. seems to fill the chair. Okay. Good. Um, probably easily 150, 200 feet wide of the shoulders. Okay. Uh, or the, the knees apart, almost that much. Um, as you enter the room and come about halfway to this this figure, Askazix kneels down and uh, uh, tilts her head and bows. I have brought them as you ordered, Lord Petrillo. There's no sound for a moment. She looks up, somewhat concerned. Clark will hello. bow. You bow? Okay. And you just sort of wave hello and <laughs> fanboy. I don't know what you, how that was. <laughs> Hi. No, I, I'm, I'm just quiet in the back, working cautiously. Okay. In here, you notice that there are none of the pillars of white. There do not seem to be any of Biloxi's bones within this room. Step slightly forward and just stand there respectfully waiting. Have we been bringing because the pillar... Well, I assumed you guys brought it with yeah. you. It I is figured... hard, so heavy, so probably a couple of you needed to move it. Yeah. I figured Askazix would have carried it because she's pretty strong. She did not even go near it. Yeah. She just led. Cool. Okay. If you ask her, she might have done something about it. Can the giant constructs fit inside the hallway? They cannot. Okay, Not without crawling, essentially. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we can announce we have one of the pillars. <laughs> did you Did you bring it with? It makes sense we would if yeah. no one else was. Yeah. yeah. Worst case scenario, I'll just like. I mean, Clark over. can take the the majority of the yeah. weight, but with a bit of help to make sure it gets mm -hmm. balanced. Yeah, yeah, I would help. Yeah. Or I can just cast the ritual for tensor's floating disc and just carry it behind us. You could. Yeah. Do you do that? Can Can we retcon this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so it you is take, the you take a few minutes yeah. and, and, and tell Askazix to hold. Um, she hold. seems impatient, but she does wait for you, and the, the disc is summoned. If possible, Clark would like to keep a hand on it as we travel, yep. even if he's not going to lift it. it. It kind of floats on its own, and it floats following uh, uh, mm -hmm. Zakis at a distance, mm -hmm. um, but it, it doesn't, it, I don't believe it resists movement, right. so you could easily kind of keep it there and guided. Uh, it actually would have served as uh, a glow in the hallway, making it easier for you guys to have seen what you saw. And perhaps as, um, uh, as I think Zacchaeus noticed the first time, you would all notice that it is glowing more strongly in, in this area than it had been out there. Um, there's a, a moment, a pause, and Askazix is looking up concerned. Um, my lord? And then um, there's a sort of rumbling sound and the imps that were crawling all over the body 
all fly fly away almost in a flock of almost like bats. They seem like bats or even something smaller at, at, in proportion and scale with this with this creature before you. And then there's a voice, but the face does not move, and you can actually make out of this distance that there seems to be almost a a white pallor across the eyes, as if they're no longer seeing. The nose itself uh, appeared perfect, but now you can see there's a nick out of one of the nostrils. Uh, the ears themselves are cut off at the bottom, almost as though they had been cleaved. But without the lips moving, you hear a voice that reverberates around the room. I welcome you. Stand and be recognized. Does that mean walk forward? Um, as Kazix stands up. Means, yeah, stand and get ready to be announced. Yeah. I'll just follow As Kazix's yeah. lead and Emerald's lead and everybody else. As Kazix uh, looks relieved to have heard her master's voice, stands up and announces each of you in turn. They are all here, I think, although the smaller one, I did not find that one. You had another, did you not? Yeah, he just kind of wandered off. Don't know I hope he's okay. Uh, <laughs> he's currently partying in the dwarven beer dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I will go and search for him. I will make sure that he has not fallen. And this one... This one is new, but he seems to be part of them and familiar somehow. I look way up, so I'm looking as close as I can in the eyes uh, and say, I am Amrun Elisar, the, po- <laughs> the, the first of Paluxia's priests in a thousand years. Um, Askazix draws in a breath, kind of surprised. She knew something was familiar, but she wasn't sure exactly what, and that seems to have confirmed maybe the worst of her suspicions. I'm sorry, my lord, I did not know. <laughs> this is how Amrin gets crushed. <laughs> the body, again, not moving. Isn't Paloxia a good thing? But the voice coming from everywhere. You have done well. Go and seek the other. Askazix nods and moves quickly out of the room. Um, Thank you. Hi. I'm going to cast uh, Beacon. No, nope, Beacon of Hope. Okay. Tell me the effects, and we'll go for the description as well. Uh, it maximizes healing. Okay. But it also gives resistance or advantage on uh, wisdom and death saves. Okay. Uh, like 30 feet, I believe. Okay. 20 feet, maybe. And this is centered on you, I believe? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 30 feet. Okay. Um, around you, start spinning tendrils of blue-white water that seem to swirl and move and don't come in contact with any of you, but you can kind of feel their presence around you. Um, You notice them joined by additional light that pours out of the pillar itself and seems to join and meld with these. And now you see that these tendrils seem almost like small creatures, Um, like fish or eels or octopuses. Almost like an underwater realm now has formed around you. No elephants, I hope. And it glows quite mightily. What what are you doing? A hesitation which you've never heard before from this voice. Healing my friends. And then I'm going to cast because I at least am still down like 30 some hit points, so I'm assuming people are still somewhat injured. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm down six. But. 
to be fair, Clark looks better than he has in 45. However long we've been here. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Literally day one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will probably use a mass cure wounds. Okay. So everyone would get back. Yeah, 27 hit points. Whoa. Hey. Since it's automatically maximized. There is a flash. As all around you, this underwater scene seems to glow and then explode outward. And uh, I say, uh, let those who hear me be healed by the power of Paluxia. The flash flows over the floor of the, of the room, collides with the walls, and several bits of stone start falling off of the wall. It almost seems like the effect of an earthquake. Clark's miles wide. <laughs> I feel better, and then I notice, like, the earthquake. Is that supposed to happen? Well, things do tend to rumble a little bit when I cast spells. Maybe that's amplified. Okay. Either way, this I'll let him know that, yes, I actually am linked to her. I look at the ceiling. Is that crumbling at all? Or? A little bit. Ooh, you boy. see a few, a few small stones kind of fall off to the side. One larger stone <laughs> crashes about 20 feet away from you. What do you need of us? There is a pause, and... <laughs> <laughs> An unexpected response, probably. At first, it sounds not entirely unlike the rumbling of the walls that just happened but then it takes on a different quality and you realize it is the sound of a deep exhaled sigh I have not felt that presence for a very long time and there's a sadness in the sound of the voice again the body unmoving the face uh, rigid almost as if made of stone it seems to have been excised from this room welcomed back instead I will greet you on your level and the sand starts to spin and swirl. The rocks that were there starting to crumble and crack and reinforce the sand, turning into this whirling dervish about 30 feet away from you all. It's a column of, of energy swirling in on itself. Little bits of, of red motes seen swirling in it as well. And after a second or two, it drops and standing there, a little taller still than you, is a version of the being you see in front of you. Probably about eight feet tall at the head, the horns extending backward again, uh, tall and proud, dressed, nothing on his, on his, uh, on his chest, uh, but again in that sort of uh, light kilt. No signs of scars or wounds, no signs of abrasions or, or wear of time or whatever. And it stops and breathes in. Uh, I have not lived in so long. And he walks over towards you, extends his wings behind him a little bit, almost more like stretching than anything necessarily intimidating. Uh, but then they fold back behind him. Cat waking up from that. <laughs> kind of, kind of. There's a little, you know, the adjusting of the, of the neck. This dice just rolled an 18 again, so we, we hear 18 pops in the joints. And the <laughs> <laughs> Almost as though they've never been used before. Uh, as he walks forward confidently towards you. Clark will, blow, bleh, will bow again. <laughs> blow. <laughs> blow. Blow. I'll also just bow. No, I'll bow my head as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll nod. Yo. So. so. <laughs> um, he raises a hand. You do not need that. We will speak as equals here, for the time being. What do you need of us? 
It has been a long time since anyone made that question of me. Mostly, mostly it is people who need things. And I've done what I could. I've kept my promise, despite everything. He looks up in his own form. I will die. This is something I never thought would be true. I must not die. This is something I know to be true. What's killing you? I am besieged. But that is only the symptom. What killed me a long time ago may also save me. I was betrayed. Tricked. Everyone looks at this by who? And he's paying close attention to him because Aaron has the thought of it, but he's kind of looking for uh, confirmation. He's like, he's just not seeing anything, but he's thinking either Marius or Cesar. <laughs> Cesar. <Well>, Cesar. <laughs> Betrayed by who? For a long time. I thought it was her, and he looks at Amrun. It wasn't, was it? No. I've seen evidence of her, and it brings me pain. For I know now that she too was betrayed. I made this place as a promise. Souls must continue. I can no longer create, but I can strengthen, I can put to trial I can see when a soul is at its weakest, how strong it will be. Or at least I could. Could you do that? Could you create again? As I am? No. If you are restored to your former power? Perhaps. It was not my doing alone. was a partnership of sorts, a union, but that is not, that is not to be hoped for. I am losing to my betrayer. Was he formerly your partner by any chance? No. He came from beyond, where all such things come. Born of the maelstrom, born of chaos, born of souls. Or of X. Yes. In another form, he came to me. I believed him, welcomed him, welcomed her. Her. Alexia? Yes. I gave her my heart. When I was betrayed, 
she was killed. And I do not know if it was the intention or a terrible joke or a mistake. And he walks over to the pillar and seems hesitant to get close, almost as though the glow from it itself is painful. And you can even see that around the edges where the glow is on his hand, it does almost appear like the skin is burning away. But he still pushes forward, just hovering from touching it. These came to be here. A reminder of what I have lost. Could she be restored? Everybody, every powerful entity in this realm seems to be collecting them. For what purpose? Her spirit was strong. This being in its presence. And he kind of pulls his hand back. And you can see now that there's even part of the, of the, the, the bones showing through his fingers. He doesn't seem to pay any mind to it, uh, but it is kind of... Uh, not even bleeding, really, but the flesh has been flensed off the, the surface of his hand. And he kind of regards it just sort of a little casually. Healing, a little healing word. Um, just a level one. Okay. Uh, you find a surprising effect as he grimaces and pulls back his hand. It does not heal. In fact, it seemed to cause him pain. Hmm. Please. Apologies. You could not know. Her power is now pain to me. Arvax will win here, and he will win in the mortal plane. If something cannot be done. You four have come here, and the other, perhaps, if it can be found. How? It was the work of of my grandmother. And he looks at you and you can feel him kind of studying you, um, looking for familiarity, looking for some rec represent uh, recognition. Me, the player, forgetting names. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll mention that a certain Emerald Amic here might have been involved. <laughs> um, he kind of turns to you and there's a, a slight nod of, of suspicion. I believe Nemozny, Nemozny brought me here. Mm. Kind Nemozny. And you? I got sucked in with these guys. <laughs> yeah, Zora Leanda, I think, is the full name. But yeah, um, he would have uttered that name, yeah. kind of recognizing it. Sorry. I got sucked in here with these guys. And he looks at you closely. Did you? Yeah. I mean, not by accident. No. Not by accident at all. I can see his work with you. Yeah, well. Do you have a weapon that we can slay a god with? No. I am no longer capable of that. Well, we should find a way, because it sounds like that's our problem. Hmm. Is Arvax a god, or is he just an entity? Arvax or... has ambitions. Trying to. More. If he were to take this realm and find a way to leave, he would spread like a disease. He's already uh -oh. tried spreading into our word, world. And what's worse, people would welcome him. His greatest weapon is love. His people worship him almost like a god now. Every day more souls are twisted to his way and not put to the wheel. No, we cannot 
kill him as we are. And I could not ask that of mortals. But, and Gilly looks up. Show them! Calls up to the large statue, and again from Ares or small holes or little caves, that flock of imps flies out and flies over the chest, pulling at the, the tattered fabric that's there to reveal first the, the side where you can see that, again, those scars are multitudinous. And for a brief moment, you kind of think, how many are there? How many people are here? And you saw them with all the scars. And it pulls away the rest of the cloth and you can see a massive hole where his heart would actually be. I need you to find that which was taken from me. When I said my heart was betrayed, it manifested that way. And it is no longer here. I would sense it. No longer in the shadow. It is no longer in the shadow. And what, how does this heart look like? Is it anatomically correct? Is it a representation of a heart? Is it the same size that would fit in that hole? It would be that large. As for anatomy, it may not look as you would expect. I do not live and breathe and bleed as you do. But for her, it was made. Was this before Ignis took her away? was when she was killed. So after she had left? Yes. What is Ignis's role in all of this if Arvax is your betrayer? He is jealous. He cannot inspire life as she does. and cannot rebuild as I can through my destruction. He will get involved despite his followers. But you have another ally he turns towards Clark. Mm. <clears throat> My patron has made his presence known here. The door is open, as I understand it. Which is how I arrived. And our time grows shorter. I have occupied Arvax's army with everything that I have. He will be held for a while. But if there is a way, he already has some method, some mechanism. I do not know what that is. It is hidden to me, and nothing here should be hidden to me. It is how he removed my heart from this realm and put it in yours. Are you certain it's in ours? There is multiple realms. I am not completely without power or allies as difficult as they can be, if not crushed first. I sent someone to find out more. Who? Sosuro. You know him. Uh, uh, yeah, we... He tried to... Yeah, things happened. Us. 
He tried to kill us a few times. Hmm. So he, he, according to how things work, he should be back here somewhere. A less powerful version of himself and less rich. He has returned. Penitent. I took him apart a little bit more. Removed a stain of Arvax's influence. He serves me again, but I watch him carefully. Good, good. We know of someone who's traveled the plains. I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that he may have been moved to help Arvax. Who? Uh, a mentor of my friend here. Yes. Emerald. If that's his real name. I had suspected, but he was protected. Protected from what? Me. At great sacrifice. As I understand it. What happened? I know he's escaped this place. I do not have those answers. My vision grows dimmer. Player question. Mm -hmm. I, the player, remember stuff. I don't know if my character <laughs> remembers stuff. Sure. Uh, I, the player, remember him having something to do with the killing of Galaxia, correct? Uh, yes, because uh, at one point he admitted guilt over that. Okay. That, that is... Was I there for that conversation? Was I there for that conversation? <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. you two were. Right? No, okay. it okay. was when I was questioning him. I okay. think, yeah. I it think. was when I, I personally was questioning him on my own. Because I have a list of questions somewhere. Okay. Well, and he also, you know, obviously has a hate on for Paluxia. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought I mention right after. And <laughs> has, has, yeah, has had... Because um, I remember... Well, part of it was that you knew that he was very, very old. Uh, because this all occurred a thousand years ago. Yeah. And um, part of it you had figured out that a thousand years ago is when this had happened. Yeah. And there's no way that it's not connected somehow. All the details aren't quite there. One of the other things is in the vision that you received as you fell through the portal of he the was house, there. he was there along with Zora Leanda um, and the somewhat insane uh, trio of uh, dryads who brought you through. So yeah, there's definitely a connection there. Yeah. But in what um, Baturo just said, everything, for example, that Azkazix had said was to say that Lord Baturo runs this realm, and there are no way, no places he cannot see. He just admitted that he did not see this, mm. that, yeah. that there was forces working against him, and mm -hmm. that he was growing weaker. So Imrol is, is he an ally? Is he an enemy? He is my mentor. And he did specifically tell me to, or order me to have no more dealings with my friend Amrun here or anything Palexia related in general. No more questions. Which I mean, course. we could have just relied upon your notes. Yeah. Uh, this is crazy, but I love it. <laughs> Which, of course, I've, you know, it's an order I've, I have not followed, mm. but it's going to be uh, difficult to proceed in our realm, if we get back there. You will have to determine that for yourself, or bring him to face me. I'll see what I can do. Was was he your ally in the past? I had agents who spoke to him. I did not know what he was doing. His soul was out of my reach. None should be out of my reach here. And yet, the four of you... I grow disturbed by these incursions. Hmm. This place was never meant to be... free to leave. That was to be my decision the souls were right to return. 
just nod. But I'm cut off even from my own people. And he looks at Clark. Tell me. How do they fare? I don't know. I too have been separate. I wish to meet them someday, and I thought perhaps by meeting you, I may see their shepherd, if not their creator. There's a, there's a nod, and then sort of almost weirdly a deflation as a sort of sadness descends upon him from that. I have not seen them. They do not come to me anymore. They do. I'm here. I'm the messenger. But you have not seen them. No. But they live in me. He considers that. Kind of nods his head. Looks at you. And I wear your mantle. My mantle. Well... A mantle associated with you. I do not understand. Clark reaches up to the glaive and draws a thumb over the blade. And then, drippy, drippy, drippy. He extends his hand and kind of collects the blood casually as if it's nothing at all in some ways. Or if that's everyday occurrence. Hmm. Good. This might make it easier. Maybe. But I need to get to him. To do any sort of act of worth. I may know a way. Everyone's lost track of things. Who's him? Is that Marius? Yeah. Okay. okay. I wasn't sure either. <laughs> I understand that you are his father, or he is yours, or you are related in some way. Families are fucked up. <laughs> My people don't have a knowledge beyond your names, and perhaps the place that you occupy. I'm learning about you now. I see. So Ignis has managed to erase us from the records, then. Poapsia was barely in the records. There, is, there are still, still some places the stories can be found. And that's where we found Sosara the first time. And the second. And the second. He was trying to kill Thylestra. <laughs> he was mistaken about what I meant. But at least now the mirror has been returned to me. It has? We left it in the cave. It had been sealed off. My mirror. Oh, there was one in the cave and there was one here. Gotcha. You know of it. Yeah, we yes, sealed we it off. sealed it off. The way was blocked to me. I could not see. Well, Thylestra sealed it off. Well, yeah. So that nobody would be able to stumble upon it again. Should it be unsealed? To be honest, we thought you were evil at the time. To be I, fair, uh, Sor Sorcerer tried to kill us multiple yeah. times. <laughs> In a manner of speaking, I suppose I am. It is my sworn duty to destroy people. Most would consider that to be evil. It is your purpose to forge people. No. I do not make... To purify. A forge does not make either. It simply changes. It changes a block of iron into a sword. Or into a plow. I do not make swords or plows. No. You take souls and forge them into what they should be. I purify them. 
I just exactly. Like, she was the forge for me. And now souls collect with nowhere to go. And I cannot stem the tide. Once your heart returns, will you be able to? I hope so. And if it is true that she returns as well, we will rebuild. I would ask of you Should a way be found to return you to the mortal plane, to find my heart, which Ab Arvax has taken. But then you will have a choice. You can return the heart to me here, somehow, but I will be restored to my full strength, and I will destroy Arvax. But I will lay my claim upon the mortal plane as well, in part. It is necessary. Um, in what manner? Any souls that depart from the mortal plane come here? That type of thing? Some. I am not so greedy as to need all. But there are many which may need to be. And he looks at Clark coerced or you could destroy the heart but then Arvax wins no I will lose and Arvax will claim this realm but he won't but have he won't have your heart though he will lose his claim on the mortal plane mm. this place will once again I suppose become a prison and hold him. And all those others who cannot move on. There will be sacrifices. Well, then we have to find your heart. I would ask this of you. He's brought you a source of power. One not unfamiliar to you, I'm sure. He looks, he glances over at the pillar. This, you mean? Yeah. Could you use it to bring us where we need to be? I cannot. But that is only because I do not know your realm. Are there any teleportation circles in your temple, by any chance? No. I do not allow them to exist. Right. But I have recently acquired someone I think who can help. Oh? Bring him! She shout, he shouts up. Is this someone we know? And the cloud flies away. Kind of dodges into another one of the tunnels. Returns in a couple of seconds. With someone who's tall and thin and very deep green skinned large pointed ears bound up in chains from head to toe and his mouth covered as well Is it Finn? large uh, metal uh, balls attached to uh, cuffs around his feet as well and he stumbles forward and kind of falls part way through and you can hear mumbling but you can't make out anything because the metal gag around his face is, is holding him. The uh, bevy of, of imps kind of flies around him in sort of an inverse version of some sort of uh, uh, Cinderella moment, kind of lifting him upward and kind of uh, dragging him forward, his feet kind of barely able to move, the two uh, stone, uh, or metal actually, uh, balls dragging behind him. And as he gets closer, you do recognize the true form of Finn the Whistler. And they kind of bring him and more or less just let him go and he 
falls down face first on the ground in front of uh, in front of Paturo. Hi again. And sort of kind of trying to move. You can see that these chains are very, very heavy and very, very thick and just covering him utterly. But he wasn't, he was thin, but he was not spindly. And he shouldn't be struggling this much with them. Uh, but there's a sort of wild look in his eye and he kind of, the eye kind of spins around and he's taking in all of you and there's this sort of diminishment of his shoulders as he just sort of like oh and if he didn't have the gag on he'd probably swear <laughs> something loud you know him uh, we briefly encountered him in the vestry yeah in the vestry forest uh, he was guarding a thing and I had a problem there was a illithid parasite inside me so we went and fetched something for him and he removed the parasite from me and then we all went our merry ways he does not belong here oh the Fey have no place in my realm. Release him. And the imps kind of move around and start to unlock small little locks that are all around him. They don't seem to have keys. They just seem to come open at their touch. And after a whirlwind of activity, the chains are kind of pulled away. And Finn, uh, kind of a little bit cramped up, clearly from his confinement, uh, kind of uh, uh, stretches himself out. Both of his legs are still clamped with these manacles, though, and he kind of frowns at them. Really? And he, he brushes himself a little bit, and you can see his clothes kind of straighten and, and uh, wearing kind of what looks like almost a green suit. It's only a slightly different shade than his own skin. And he kind of brushes his hands through his hair, and his hair kind of combs itself out perfectly. Hi. Hi. Mm. Hello. So not met. And you are? I'm Finn. And he extends his hand. I shake his hand. Okay. Uh, it feels very warm, and he kind of holds onto it, and he kind of leads in a little close. Get me out of here. <laughs> that, that was your, your job. Uh, so, Pachero, uh, <laughs> this is your job. <laughs> he can help us out of here? If he can be convinced. Ah, yeah, sure. What the hell do you need? Wait. Just get me out of these chains. And he's kind of who, lifting his feet. Who is he? Some type of fay. And he, he whistles a, a tune. And it's weird because it's like three people are whistling the tune because he manages to have his own bass, his own highlight, and there's just this rhythm somehow mm -hmm. as well. Is he beatboxing? Kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really have to consider if he can beatbox. This is, this is interesting, yeah. Questions that D&D never thought you would Well, ask. you know, <laughs> welcome to D&D. Here, here we beatbox. Uh... I can release him if you can assure me he never returns. Don't really want to come back. Didn't really want to come the first time. How did that you was foolish. get here to begin with? Not going to tell you. Not going to be tricked a second time. What? That bastard. Oh, 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 right. Him. Oh. Uh, him. That, yeah. Yes, Emerald. Um, what am I, I being bound into here? What is it everybody needs here? I'm not sure if we can say that he can never return. Especially I can not, say it. Especially not that the way has been open for others to come in, such as myself. And Finn kind of... That's what that is! Fresh air! I knew it! Tell me, how did you do it? A friend. Uh, and uh, Paturo kind of looks back and forth between him and the rest of you. Do what? The traveling to here, right? Yggdrasil oh, might have accidentally been planted. And his eyes go wide, recognizing obviously the name of Yggdrasil. Who, uh, Pichiro? Here. Pichiro, or... Okay. That is how Namazni was able to bring me. Uh, well, one of her lord keepers or priestesses brought me, but... I will have to see to uprooting that particularly uh, nasty bush. It does not belong here. As long as the uprooting will not kill it. I believe it is as long a as, friend. As long as there is a way to replant it. Mm. But there is an opportunity while it is here. I do not like its presence. We've been sent here, fated, to change your shadow. 
let us do that. And you can remake it any way you like. If you can return my heart. Then I ask you not to kill mine. Your heart is a tree? Yes. Souls seem to do strange things down here. It contains the soul of my fiance. Uh, if you can agree. I think help husband us move now. It, <laughs> if you can agree to help move it to where it is more appropriate rather than harm it, then I think we can agree to finding your heart. Where does I, it live? Emron looks around at the others just to it, see if anyone's on the same wavelength or not. Clark it's wonders. Currently in clustering. Clark wonders with his eyes why you're bargaining. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> "We're doing this." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, well, I'm just trying to get safety for yeah. the tree. <laughs> in addition to that, if I, if he says he will do it, he almost certainly has to. But uh, it lives in the festering forest. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There was a little accident with uh, giving it an inner brood. But they're no, they're no longer your problem anymore. They are dead? Uh, no, not quite. They're not, not here. They're the reason it was accidentally planted. They planted? We tried to stop them. I do not understand. I planted it while trying to save it. Turns out that's what they wanted to be able to leave. For Yggdrasil to be here is dangerous. For it and for everything. I agree. Mm -hmm. I will shift my forces. They will defend the tree against Arvax. As for you, and he turns to Finn. Yes, I'll go. No problem. Just point the door. Uh, we were told by Paturo that you may have a way out of here. We need you to take all of us with you to back to our world. Then whatever you do is up to you, uh, as long as you don't come back here, as Paturo has just mentioned. Well... Maybe... You seem to be in a hurry to get out of this place. Yeah, I was. Um, the next down to the, the chains. That didn't work uh, out the way I expected it to. Uh, okay, well then. All I have to do is take the four of you back to where you were. And one more, if you can. Well, now there's another one? Lost in the tree somewhere. Oh. Wait, you're not him. Okay. Lost in the tree. Lost in the tree? It yeah. can be anywhere. That's going to take some work. You hear this faint, uh, uh, far <laughs> voice going, Go on without me! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, primarily us. There is... There is a spell I can ca cast that would take us home, but I normally need a connection to my church to do it. If you have some way of supplying a connection or supplying my friend with... Point to the pillar, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a connection here. Right. I don't have one of those there, so I don't know if it would work. Um, <laughs> you're telling, uh, are you asking Finn about this? Uh, kind of looking at Finn and Paturo. Mm -hmm. Just sizing up... Uh, just feeling out the temperature of the, the room. Um, um, when you say the word church, uh, Finn actually backs a step or two back from you? No. Nope, nah, not gonna well, do it. Nowhere near those things. It, have you ever used a teleport circle? Because my friend can make them if you can give him the right symbol to get back to our world. Yeah, that's a little too mortal I for me. I know yeah. of magics. I don't know them yet. Don't quite understand them. If it, if it works, it works. Um, Pichiro, you said it you... It will not work here. That is the point of this place. Mm. What if you could make it work? Just right here. Just make a small teleportation circle for us to leave and then destroy it. I would never open up this place to that opportunity. Yeah, it would. 
That would be a vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Um, and you also remember, though, the remains of a teleportation circle in the basement or the top floor, depending on how you read the inversion, of Emerald's Tower, and the tele teleportation circle in the library, which was yeah. probably the corresponding one, it's and just the amount of power necessary to actually make that work. So I'd need a pillar, and to fix the teleportation circle, which could take, like, days or whatever. You'd have to basically reinvent it. That was yeah. the problem there. Which, that would take forever. <laughs> okay, let me just make sure I got this straight. If I can get the four of you out of here and maybe go find your friend, then I'm square. I can take these things off. I can go. Uh, Clark looks to Paturo. And not come back. And, and see how he reacts to that statement. Um, and not come back. And when you say out of here, it has to be in our world specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Preferably in a non-remote location. Sure, yeah. No, that's easy. I mean, not easy at all but better than these things and then he kind of lifts his leg and it's almost like he's lifting a thousand pounds trying to just and his foot just settles back down yep don't like these things cold 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 I do have one more question for Vittoro I may have one more answer what does the wild hunt have to do with any of this and he kind of bristles <sighs> Because for me, all this started during my, my trials. I was watching them. My agents were watching them. They came here in a way I do not know. I searched for it. I did not find it. And they left before I could do anything about them. There have been too many ways in and out, but I have been too weak for too long to do anything about it. They are souls half remade, once living, but didn't die, just changed. I do not know how that was done. It was not by me. But they gathered more here. They stole more souls from me. You can see him kind of getting a bit angry about that. Those souls will never be reborn properly until they are destroyed utterly. We've been trying. I knew that there was a connection between them and Arvac and something. I just could never figure out exactly what it was. Stop his power. Remove my heart from his plans. And if you can send them to me, if I still have power, I will deal with them. He steps back a bit, and you can see the form starting to dissolve into sand once again. Uh, Amber, mm -hmm. little aside. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you could uh, invoke your patron here, even for a moment? In what way? I mean, I can I can cast her magic here. Show him she still lives. Give him, give him a moment of hope before we leave. That was kind of the hopes of the uh, the uh, beacon of hope. Beacon of hope that he sees me casting her magic. Uh, do you have Arcana trained? Oh yeah. Uh, make an Arcana check. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um. I have a thought though that may do that as a side effect it may um, better our chances of getting where we're going um, is there some way at this point he's dissolved back into the yeah. cloud and then presumably the bigger version of him is the yeah. one still paying attention 
Is there some way I can get to her skull at the front? I may be able to help. Help how? Comes the voice now from no distinct place and almost rumbling through the entirety of the place. I may be able to bring some of her defenders to aid you. There's a, a long, quiet moment. What's left of her to me is there. It helps defend the doors. I would not want to risk that too highly. It would not be a risk. It would not be a risk to that. Uh, I simply believe that that may be the closest place to connect, uh, to contact her. The most efficient. Then proceed. I take it you will do as I asked. If you will do as you as we asked, then yes. Mm-hmm. We can't. And lose. you'll do what I need too. <laughs> well, what you need is, is also what we need, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, what, what else do you need? Can I make an insight check? You can. Well, there's, there's a two, so... <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, whatever the hell. he's You don't know what anything is going on in his head. Um, if I can find a path out there, I will walk to some place that lets me go stand in front of the skull. Um, as you start to walk out, uh, Finn's kind of like... but. I, you can stay there. But I, I want to come out. I don't no. really want to. All right. I'll describe it, it to you later. Stay. Then he kind of sits cross-legged down, looks a little grumpy. Um, you can follow the same way you came in uh, if you want to go down that hallway, because it does lead to the front doors where the skull was above it somehow. Sure. Uh, I'd like to end up on the skull rather than mm-hmm. looking at it. But, yeah, if I can walk out on um about four different imps start kind of circling around you at a distance. It's like they don't really want to get too close to you um, and then seem to be lining up to lead you somewhere. Um, I'll follow them. If necessary, I'll blast them. Uh, they, uh, as you come out of that main foyer once more, uh, they've now repaired the door and put all those stones back in and the, the three of these uh, behemoths uh, stand there unmoving until you step in and one of them strides towards you. Again, that very, very quick stride, taking only two steps really to get to you, uh, but then uh, bends down and extends its hand right in front of where, or in front of you are. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go and go. Clark will hop on too, if possible. All right. Uh, it doesn't. It isn't waiting for you, but you're fast enough to do that. What about the, the other two? Hmm? Are you going to hop on or are you going to stand down? Or are you going to stay with Finn? Hmm? Um, I'm going to stay in the room with Finn. Okay. I just don't know what's going on and don't want to dampers. Okay, what about uh, Zacchaeus? Where's his curiosity lie? Well, Finn's not giving me straight answers, or he's giving me totally obvious answers that I'm just missing, but I'll, I'll just go along with the casting of the spell in the skull. Okay. So you're gonna, I want to see this magic. You're going to hop on the hand yeah, as well? Okay. Or try to. Again, it doesn't really wait for you, but you realize that <laughs> this is the only way up as you hop on. And it is a bit shaky as it's not really used to carrying people this way, but it doesn't seem to have any uh, problem carrying your weight whatsoever. Kind of walks over and starts to climb part of the rock. So it's a bit of a shaky journey back and forth as it climbs one-handed and then kind of lifts you up over its head and you can see there's an alcove opening uh, up there. And from the alcove you can see a red glow beyond. Uh, And it kind of levels its hand there. One one of the imps flies around you and flies down in through the hole in front. The alcove itself is about six feet tall and kind of roughly um, curved uh, arch opening and then rounded corners at the bottom. Sure, I'll follow. Almost an organic shape of stone. I'll follow on one too. Okay. And as you walk through, um, the light grows brighter and brighter red. um, And you can come around to see uh, large glowing red orbs which were the effectively the eyes of that we're seeing outward uh, and you can see the front of the skull from the inside it looks like it's been packed with with uh, rock and sand 
so you're not seeing the bone itself. Mm. But you do see outward where you'd seen. You could see far off in the distance the, the white streak of the, uh, the umbral nest, the dark black uh, pillars of, of stone, which is where um, Arvax supposedly has his place. The, um, the uh, festering forest lies before you, the Grey Brook, and you can even see uh, um, Withergate uh, kind of laid out. And it, strangely, you can see the entirety of the realm from here. Nice. But it really shouldn't be that visible. It might be an effect of the place itself. Guide vision. Um, and these two glowing red orbs seem to be in constant motion, both physically turning and twisting, but also the energy that streaks around them um, seems to be constantly uh, uh, shifting and changing and spiraling. And you seem, and you feel now this this weird presence. Um, it's not entirely unlike what you felt at the Serene Temple. This sort of presence of her, strangely, all around you, but muted, um, distant, almost like an echo of that same thing. Okay. The imp is sort of pops up onto the under the uh, edge of the eye and is just, just sort of looking or edge of the uh, the hole of the skull and is kind of looking at you, watching, observing. He'll head twitched. Okay. Say this is going to take me a little while, 20 minutes or so. Um, he, um, uh, Emin will set up sort of like to cast a ritual. He's just casting two spells, but they're the ones that I'm casting down to 10 minutes, so they're basically rituals. And this so. chamber is, is roughly circular, about 30 feet wide. Yep. So, plenty of space. Uh, he's going to take the six chaos crystals that he had from the uh, lair of the illithids that we found in the city. Mm. Um, they were crystals enchanted with enchantment magic. Uh, he also has an illusion crystal, but I'm not certain that would be all that much useful for this. So he's going to space them out equally around. And again, he's probably going to do this like as one ritual, but really it's the casting of two spells. Okay. Um, he's going to cast Planar Ally twice. Mm, okay. Uh, um, you do both, uh, even though you're distracted with the work that you're doing, Emrin, um, but especially Zakis, uh, you notice that the imp is paying more ah, attention crap. than the imp should probably pay attention to this. And then you realize okay. the imp is watching this because yeah. Baturo is watching this. That's yeah. what I figured. Um, they are his eyes. And probably when he was referred to allies and, and spies and agents, mm -hmm. they're probably half of them. Okay. Uh, because you have seen them innocuously everywhere. Nice. Yeah. I'll just, while Amrun sets up his, his rituals, I'll just observe the orbs. Like, okay. is there, what kind of magic's coming from them? And. Just basically, I want to know as much as I can. Sure, and with, with the, the amount of setup that he has to do, you can kind of do it uh, basically without not magic, uh, not magically. You don't have to cast detect magic necessarily, although you can to get further detail. Um, but for well, the where they, where they are placed and the way that it it, it looks, uh, divination will be the strongest kind of magic here. But this goes beyond divination magic uh, that you're kind of aware of, uh, in that uh, it's a little bit like. Uh, the uh, I forget the name of the spell, but you have a spell which will cast a a, 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 a sensor and you can move the sensor. About. Oh, magic, uh, arcane Mage, eye. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a little bit like that. You think, uh, kind of theorizing through it, but at the core you can see what looks like, and as you kind of observe it, and every once in a while the sparks move a little further apart, um, you actually make out that there might actually be eyes in the center of this. Eyes probably as big as your doubled fists, at the very center of all of this energy. And it's, they're held floating in midair. Um, and you also remember that uh, his own eyes, Petruo's own eyes, were glossed over. So it's entirely possible that he doesn't actually have eyes, that these are actually his eyes. Whoa. That he has moved here and maintains a connection to, to watch over his realm. And now he's pissed that he can't see like half the things going on. <laughs> he's definitely missing <laughs> yeah. things. They were things that you told him that he was surprised at. And that really shouldn't. I the mention. giant tree growing over there. Well, well, in fact, from here you can't see it. The yeah. festering has covered it over at this point, but you know where it is. Yeah. I mean, you're not there, but you you know exactly where it is. But even they can kind of pick out a little bit. Well, actually, the two of them. Amrun has no idea where that is, uh, other than seeing a big, crazy-looking forest. I'll ask the imp, assuming that maybe he can respond, just hoping he can, he can respond. Are those dangerous to touch? Uh, it kind of cocks its head at you and watching. <laughs> <laughs> Touch it. 
poke it with a stick. <laughs> I'll just gently move over to like where the eyes are. Put my hand next to it, not touching it. Okay, you can feel the pressure of the energy as it's moving around. Okay. Kind of like the same way you, if you put your hand close to a flame, you can feel the heat even though you're not in the flame. Mm -hmm. Or if you're close to an electrical, uh, uh, like an electrical fence, you don't have to touch the electrical fence to, to feel a little bit of that static electricity. I'll just look back at the imp without touching. It's watching you steadily. Kind of every once in a while looking over to where Amrun is just to see what, the, what he's setting up, but... This seems to be the more interesting thing for the moment. You look over at the imp to see if it's okay, and the imp is looking at you to see what happens. <laughs> Basically. Science. <laughs> Very gentle, gentle touch. See what happens. Okay. Uh, make a constitution saving throw. 15 plus 2, so that's a 17. Okay. So... The first thing that happens for you is you lose all sense of everything. You lose sense of Trivia. sight, of smell, of hearing, of equilibrium, of taste, of touch, of heartbeat. Everything vanishes in an instant. Whoa. And you see the vast realm around you. And if you focus on any little bit for a moment, it is as though you move there in an instant and you can watch. Your eyes drift around and you see out of the, the corner of your eye a, a flash which catches your eye and you instinctively look that direction. And you see the battle going on now. The massive creatures with the drums and the wave of energy now not just disrupting magical effects but actually physically pushing legions away. Um, and you can see different creatures in there. Some are skeletal in nature. Some of them are similar to the ones that you had fought around the Temple of Nemozny, only gigantic. Some look like they're formed from three or four versions of the same thing. Uh, so you start to take in details of that. It gets a little creepy when one of them, snap, turns its head directly at you. Uh -oh. And you kind of back up instinctively and then it's cut down by something in front of it that it wasn't paying attention to. It's not going to kind of step back. For the other two in the room, you kind of see Zacchaeus who's having this conversation with the imp, and his hands slowly getting closer, slowly getting closer. <laughs> the cat's got to push over the thing on the, on, the, on the area. And then he touches the thing and vanishes. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I'll... What can I think of? I can't what? say I didn't see that coming. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Yggdrasil. <laughs> Like, what does that look like right now? Can I can I go to, like, any location that I want? Um, you can try. Okay. Um, Let's visit the bottom of Emerald's Tower, in my mind. Okay. Now. Um, it's a little bit dizzying as the point of view shifts and kind of moves through. And you feel resistance when it gets to the edge of the festering forest. Almost as though the forest itself is resisting this sort of sight. Uh, but you kind of persevere. Make a, a, a uh, make a charisma saving throw. Oh, no. That's a four. Four. And you find yourself kind of caught up in the branches and something you haven't felt for a while. Mm -hmm. Disorientation. You don't know which direction is which. Nope. And All panic right. starts to set in a little back bit. Back up, back up. So you back up and find yourself kind of hovering over the gray brook. Back up more. Okay. And don't want to go there. <laughs> back up even further now over the road that you were on before. Not far from you, you can see the Temple of Namazani. Uh, and in this vision, it seems to glow um, a pure white, almost painful to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see the uh, small form of the of the uh, the monk, essentially, who lived there, the priest who lived there, kind of just sit, sitting on the steps. Kind of looks like he's just relaxing for a moment. Weirdly enough, he has a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And I can't get through the festering because that's. What if I just float over the festering and go see the Well, you remember, a festering grows right to the right, very right. roof, right? I mean, for the tree? Or to the roof of the entire... Of, of the cave, essentially, of the shadow, that, okay. that is the shadow. It's climbed the tree. Well, that was an interesting adventure. Let's just go back to my body now. Okay, make a constitution saving throw. 13. For 15? 15. Um, you zip back, and you see the two of them working. Amrun seems to be continuing to work. Uh, the imp looks directly at you. Whoa. And you're standing where you were, except for the fact that you don't have a body. 
there still seemed to be that moat of of uh, perception. Back my moat a little further away okay. from the thing, but not far not so far that I fall from the edge of the skull. Okay. Make a constitution saving throw. Net 20! As you kind of back away from it and kind of have to force it, you have to kind of remember and you think to yourself, okay, I'm a physical being, I have a body. There is a hand and a hand. is a real thing. Uh, and it's almost as though you have to rip it out of yourself. And you kind of find yourself pushing back. Two of you see his, his form kind of shift backward uh, and kind of reconstitute itself. Uh, and the imp falls over laughing. Very cute. Uh. And block one of the crystals he was going to knock over. <laughs> I wasn't going to knock it over. <laughs> oh, that crystal. You're stumbling around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Oh, that I one was I almost stepped on. <laughs> terrifying and amazing at the same time. I, I just grazed my hand on it lightly, like, like, like this, and I could see everything in here, except for the festering. But the, uh, I'm the sure imp, with enough effort, the imp I kind of pushes itself, flies back up, and sits back on the edge, uh, and speaks what uh, discongruously, I might say, in an extraordinarily deep voice. Hmm? I would suggest you not do that again, but it was funny. What would have happened had things gone poorly? You would have become part of my vision. Yours is not the first soul to be consumed by it. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Roll up a new character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> so about 20 minutes setting yeah. up this, this uh, sigil, essentially? or uh, Not so much a sigil, it's mostly just in a circle. Okay, uh, He'd Probably be doing a little bit of stuff with chalk and whatnot, mostly religious symbols and whatnot. Okay. Um, effectively, what he wants to do is call a couple of planar allies to help defend this particular area. Okay. Now, uh, the spell uh, says, I beseech an unworld, otherworldly entity for aid, must be known to me, in this case, Paluxia. Uh, that entity sends a celestial, elemental, or fiend loyal to it to aid you. I'm assuming celestial or elemental. Uh, making the creature appear in an unoccupied space within range. If I knew a specific one, I could ask for that, but it's still up to you what actually shows up. Uh, and the effect of it is, the, uh, if I form an agreement with them, then they will do that thing. And then after it's done, come to me and report and then disappear afterwards. Now, uh, as to what they will or will not agree to is entirely up to you. Uh, there is an idea for a cost for things, but if it is a non-hazardous thing or if it's in their best interests, they may waive the cost or reduce the cost. All I'm doing is summoning them uh, with their power from the enchantment crystals to hopefully maybe either make them stronger or more agreeable or whatever uh, and ask them to defend the body of the uh, def defend the remains of their goddess for as long as they can uh, while we attempt to resolve the situation um, he has little to nothing else he can offer for payment uh, so if they don't want to that's fine he will not uh, force the issue but um Basically, it'll summon two that might help uh, if they decide to. Other than that, it's entirely up to you. So you're gonna first cast it once, and then try to cast it again. Effectively, yeah. I've got a. It's a level six spell, so I've got a six and a seven slot that I'll use. But, um, okay. but yeah. Well, do you want uh, some time to think about that? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. It's about break time. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to take a break and I'll think about that. Uh, we will return. I don't know if we have a particular typical break. Um, I think it's once all of us have yet used the washers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, so given how timeless the shadow is, we measure things in bodily functions now. Uh, but we'll return. Uh, and of course, obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, nothing has happened, amazingly enough.
anticipation of the return. Uh, yeah, I hope you're still watching. Uh, we had another uh, technical glitch. If you're watching it on YouTube, nothing happened. It was fine. Everything is perfect. All we are, perfect. We know what we are doing. Nothing ever goes wrong. Um, ever, ever. Other than I forget to post the thing for a month. Beyond that, however, we return back to our scene where we have... Uh, Amrun having an ambitious casting mm -hmm. of uh, what was it called again? Uh, oh, planar ally. Planar ally, a sixth level spell, taking mm -hmm. the time to set out these crystals, and I'm assuming kind of using celestial writing essentially as your oh, yeah. binding connections. It's the only thing he speaks other than Elven and Goblin. And aside uh, from from uh, Zakus's uh, uh, little uh, foray into everywhere, uh, the uh, <laughs> the site of Peturo, so to speak. Uh, and uh, Clark kind of on standby just in case anything goes seriously wrong. You cast if anything goes boom, you can let me know. Mm. What, what does it look <laughs> like when he casts a spell? Do you have a particular look in mind? If not, I can I can make something up. Um, let's see if I no, it it really is a call out, out that. but they're kind of looking uh, at Yeah. Us. He's probably mostly meditating, doing some, uh, uh, reciting some prayer. Uh, stuff for focusing. Um, uh, really, yeah, he's just kind of uh, reaching out to Paluxia uh, to see if she would like to send a couple of things over to help defend her bones okay. uh, and her ex-boyfriend. So, as you move through the patterns and you say the, the the words in celestial calling to the very essence of the universe, essentially, um, nothing seems to be happening. And nonetheless, one of the key elements of this is faith. So you continue to press forward. Again, nothing seems to be happening. And you're coming on the closing part of the ritual. You expected more reaction from it. And as you utter the last words, probably a little desperation climbing into your voice just because you really want this to work. And there is a reaction. The celestial symbols you've kind of laid out in the dirt and the sand here and the stone, probably a little bit of chalk as well, glimmer slightly and then fade, recede. And for the moment, that seems all that has happened. Meanwhile, in the other room, for the past 20 minutes, Finn has been uh, literally whistling one song after another, just kind of waiting, trying to do it. It's You sense a bit of frustration in him, though, because while to a mortal performer, his songs would be considered to be extraordinary at the moment, he seems frustrated, almost as though there's a level of which he's not able to reach. And so he cuts himself off numerous times while performing. Um, and after a certain amount of time, the pillar that you left behind flashes white. And that energy rolls out along the walls. And you can hear, again, kind of a bit of a rumble from the walls themselves as they sort of Im take some of the impact. But instead of going outward in a circle from there, it is almost as though it pours like a wave down the tunnel where uh, where um, the rest had gone, where Amrun had led them, or was led down to the other end, and it pours down there like water gushing through this hole. From inside, uh, up above in the head, um, there is a, a rumbling sound as the dirt around you seems to shake and shiver and the ground itself seems to move. But then you quickly realize it's not ground that surrounds you. It is, in fact, the, the, the former skull or representation of the skull, depending on how you look at it, of Paluxia. And small bits and pieces of rock fall off the edges, revealing a little bit of extra light. Um, from where you're at, kind of a bit back further, um, you can see a big flash from in the main foyer where you were. Uh, and then joined by multiple other flashes, and then you can almost hear the sound of this wave. You hear the sound of the shifting also of those uh, giant behemoths uh, kind of shifting as where they're standing, almost rocking in place, as a swirling white, milky blue-white wave kind of comes up through the tunnel you're in 
and washes outward through the eyes, through the sockets, and flies outward. And you both kind of, all three of you kind of look outward towards it, and you see it rocketing towards the south, where it, in a, an instant, almost like the speed of light, vanishes and stretches thin, or stretches thin and then vanishes, rather, uh, colliding with the umbral nest at the far end, where it seems to spin and swirl around it, getting larger and larger until it returns, flowing now as uh, multiple small streamers going through the eyes where the sockets were and filling up these symbols, spinning and swirling and twisting and turning into a shape. A shape, but not a form. It seems to be a humanoid form, uh, large, almost eight feet tall. It has uh, uh, broad, uh, flat, or broad curved strokes that flow out of these multiple little ribbons that are surrounding it. Each one you have a feeling is a soul, all bound and shaped and formed into this. And as those, those curved shapes move further, you recognize them to be the shapes of wings forming behind. As standing before you, in constant motion, not entirely unlike the effect you've seen on the eyes themselves mm -hmm. that are standing there, where they have the constant motes of energy flowing around them. Here it is constant small uh, balls of bluish white energy, leaving trails behind them, almost like ribbons, wrapping and forming and moving rapidly to this strong form. And there before you stands something. You've never seen anything like this before, but the images that you've seen carved into the temples make it feel like an angel. And with 200 voices, maybe more, it speaks a chorus a voice. We have come to defend Our Lady. We are sorry. We wish to make amends. Do I know anything about this kind of creature? Uh, religion check? Yeah, if you have trained in religion. I think so. I think you were. Yeah, plus ten. That's a 14. 14 total? Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, nothing of this particular form comes to mind, but the shape uh, does evoke uh, angels that are sometimes said to be the messengers of gods, sometimes said to be the, the, the fists of gods or the, the weapons of gods. Um, that still seems to be true, but it's not quite... There's a word you're looking for, and it's not quite coming to you. And it, it sort of, again, it is not a solid form, but the outline or the, the solid created by the mm -hmm. moving uh, kneels down to you and bows. I bow and return. The, Please defend Our Lady for as long as you can. We need time to... Time to deal with those who would wrong her. There's a, a movement, and it's strange because, again, this outline of a form is the only thing that's just a shape, mm -hmm. but there's no solidity to it whatsoever. So it's really just things orbiting and twisting around. But it looks like it moves towards the window, or towards the, the, eye, uh, the eye opening, and looks outward. We are confused. Where shall we defend her? Here or out there? Here. Defend, and I'll reach out and touch one of the exposed bone areas. Mm -hmm. Defend what remains of her until we can return with our Vax's bane. Actually, he'd say, he put please in front of that because he's asking to, he can't demand them to do anything. It reaches out and several of the souls, perhaps all of them at one point, come in contact with that, mimicking the hand. And then it turns and looks at the imp and prepares to strike. Uh, that imp serves Paturo. We know. Who wishes to, who wishes to bring 
Alexia back. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Natural 20. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, the, the, the it. imp itself seems to be passive. Um, you would recognize that the imp's probably not in control. So he'd probably be a little more worried than this. Mm. But it seems to be passively watching and his head cocked a little bit as the creature sort of seems to manifest an extension of its arm, which would be the shape of a weapon almost, mm. almost a mace or something, but stops mid-stride. We are confused, but we will do as you say. Is Paturo not the enemy then? No. We believe, uh, well, maybe I believe, uh, Arvax is the betrayer, the one who brought this about. He is the one that, that Paluxia's remains must be defended against. Paturo defends this area as well but his attention is split. And there's a, a pause, and there's no face as such either. Mm -hmm. Again, it kind of just, if you can imagine uh, almost a strobe light effect, where you see these little things take a, take a shape of a nose for a second, then it's gone. Um, and then there's a, a, a sort of deep bow, as you wish. And it flows, taking away its form for a moment flows out the, the eye socket and then reforms down in front, standing on guard. Was this in Celestial or Common or something else? It spoke in Common. Okay. It spoke in Common. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in this case. They spoke in Common. I think I made a solamental. They, they, here's the bad pun. We've all been waiting for it. They toot in Common. Ouch. Uh, yes, it seems to have been successful, if somewhat an unexpected version of what you were expecting. Sure. No, it's, that should help. So uh, that's about all I can That do. was the goal. Mm -hmm. Clark, we'll look down uh, room. Good? I think so. Let's go. I'm going to pack up the crystals and go. And the imp is kind of just looking out at the thing, kind of observing it at the window. I'd say to, I'll say to the imp that it should defend you. At least we'll defend here, so maybe that will help you some. Turns back to you, and there's a sort of smile on the imp's face. And again, speaking with a voice that is unsuited for its tiny form. It will help. Okay. Let's go and is figure out how to get out of here. Golem's hmm. hand still up? Uh, yeah, it seems okay. locked in position. Hop on the hand, hold on. <laughs> Nothing seems to happen. And you also notice this room seems a lot dimmer than it was just a little while ago. The veins of white where the bone were are not glowing as strongly as they were. Are we all in the hand? Think, yeah. Alright, take Perhaps us down. I might have drained the power. Knock on the hand. Take us down. Doesn't seem to move. Clark will start us descent. Okay. It's easy to climb. It's a rocky creature. Uh, but as you make your way down to the bottom... Um, you look up and you notice the uh, faint uh, symbols on the surface of its back mm. around where the thing are start to take little sparks of color again, little sparks of light. Um, Recharging. And as you kind of are there, it seems to judder a bit and it kind of shakes you where you're standing, but then does eventually slowly lower you down, lower you down very, very slowly, however. That's okay, I'll wait. Right to go down. I kind of loading. imagine it's like a really slow escalator, like <laughs> without the boring music. It's only moving like fast. You're like two feet off the ground, still still going down, like six inches, still waiting for it to hit the bottom. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll hop off, and I guess yeah, we'll head back to the room. Okay. <laughs> As you head back, um, Finn is now kind of hit upon something he likes. Uh, but then stopped when all the light show went off. That was good, right? <clears throat> it's a little hard to tell with these. With Amarin, it's hard to tell. Yeah. 
and then the rumbling voice from around you, it was good. You come back in. He could have fixed everything. He could have killed then everything. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that kind of pattern. Um, you return back to this room. Um, the imp has flown off now and vanished off into one of the alcoves. Um, unexpected, but good. And once again, the swirling starts up again, uh, this time more vigorously than before, and it seems to take shape even faster, but the form is noticeably diminished. Uh, it's actually shorter than uh, Elzera at this point, closer almost to, almost like a tall dwarf in stature. I'm um, not the shortest person in this party. Who is the shortest person? Is Clark mm -hmm. Clark might be, yeah. yeah. Okay. Zach is used to be until Wild I know Zach is not anymore. Because he, he, <laughs> Zach is, he is got, the only person taller than me. Okay. <laughs> Clark's like 5'4". Okay. Some he's, reason he's not I tall. Thought, I thought uh, El Zero was the smallest. Yeah. In real life, so I'm yeah, the It's probably what I accidentally <laughs> made a mistake of doing. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, to Clark then, uh, someone a bit shorter than you, again, like a tall dwarf. Uh, in fact, has a, a almost big beard, weirdly enough, but it's not natural hair. Mm -hmm. It seems almost like um, uh, greasy strands, almost like snakes as they twist and turn a little bit. Uh, again, still not wearing a, a shirt and just with the same sort of guilt as before. Uh, and, but the horns are still distinct, uh, strangely enough. Um, you get the impression that he takes different forms depending on who he feels like he needs to talk to or whatever whim he might have. And his voice changes a little bit. Good. Good. I like what you've done so far. And I have a gift for you. Something that should help. If you'll accept it, that is. Certainly. Oh, gladly. Sure. What is it? Hold out your arms. Left, right? Whichever you prefer. Both. Both. <laughs> okay. My birthmark is on my right, so I'll put it on the left. Okay. Um, and he kind of gets you to roughly line up a little bit. And then uh, with... <laughs> now, don't make any mistakes anymore. That's your wake up. No, no. Um, uh, he moves down the, the line, and depending on whether you've left your hand or left hand or right, he reaches you with the right or left hand, the appropriate one, the opposite one for a handshake. And it's more like an arm bar, you know, where you grab practically to the full elbow and hold on. Um, but as the, the flesh comes in contact with your own and he squeezes on your elbow, there's a small burning sensation from the upper part where, where the, the arms have come together. Uh, and as he pulls away, you notice a small symbol. Um, it looks like uh, a broken infinity symbol. Um, it looks like it's a, the figure eight, but it's broken in two points, uh, such that it, ca it has a... a um, essentially a, a segment in the middle. So I should have drawn it out, but uh, in fact, I will draw it. So it's like, well, it's like two loops, but with nothing in the middle? Uh, not quite. So. <laughs> so it looks like that. Okay. Oh, the opposite like, of what yeah, I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, okay. yeah, so. Okay. Chunk's missing. Chunk's missing. Um, and that's burned on the outside. You can feel the skin is rough. It, it feels like a burn mark. But while there was a little bit of discomfort at the time, there is not much. Uh, who's first? Okay, I'm Rune. Um, you actually feel more pain uh, than the rest of them will at the time. And you get a sensation, you get a feeling that there. this is literally, literally demonic magic. And he has to push a little bit harder to overcome the natural resistance. I get a 24 to not scream out. Okay. Yeah, it, it, you flinch a little bit, I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, but when, as he does this, uh, he looks each of you directly in the eyes, and you can swear there's almost a, a jovial smile. Not a huge one, but sort of a friendly smile. Uh, again, maybe it's just sort of the, 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 the way this dwarven version of himself uh, gets expressed. Who's the second person? You? Okay. Uh, he grasps hands with you and kind of locks, and you almost get the sense there's an extra sort of extra twist in there, almost, you know, the, the recognition of, of a strong, uh, not equal, but sort of a strong comrade. And then there's something really weird that happens as you start to hear whispers. 
Oh, one whisper, actually. What's the surface thought in Amrun's mind right now? Very top level. How that hurt. You hear Amrun's voice in your head saying, how that hurt. Who's third? I would be third. Okay. Zach, this is usually last in things. <laughs> I can see people wincing, so I'm expecting there's a little, a little bit of pain, A little but... bit of, of, uh, of almost gentleness in the touch. Uh, almost a... a uh, as much almost like a caress as it is a handshake. Kind of like a, a friendly or, or, or very almost like a hug, practically, with mm. hands. Again, that same sensation. What is uh, the surface thought in Clark's head right now? Uh... It's it's like uh, it's not so much words as it is just a feeling I would think, okay. and it's it's a lot of uh, like looking over a horizon on off a off a mountain top. Like okay. you, you get that like moment of like whoa. There's Vertigo a lot almost. of well, there's a lot of stuff. And it's all happening. Okay, and stabbed with hot iron, she gets like. Gently held. That, that, <laughs> like that, there's an exhilaration. Yeah, that that sense of exhilaration, that sense of, of uh, amazement, flows now from Clark to you, and also Amrun. You start to pick up that that sense as well. What's her surface thought at the moment? That didn't hurt that bad, Wimp. <laughs> <laughs> and you could have swore she said it, but you also didn't hear it. <laughs> Dead so. Y'all, y'all get to hear all their thoughts now. That's weird. They're all giving each other weird looks that I don't understand. Like, and then so he reaches out. And <laughs> no, I said, uh, I said out loud. It didn't. That didn't hurt. It was, wait, what? <laughs> and then you're kind of like ah, as it does kind of sting quite, quite noticeably, <laughs> and seems to linger a little bit longer than the rest. Um, and then pulls his arm away, and you can see, and there's a little bit of of smoke from this brand that he's made. So it's like on the farm. Um, it's on, uh, yeah, sorry, it's on the inside arm. It's okay. in so, where the grasp is. Yeah, so like right here. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's not visible to someone outside, but you can see it to yourselves. Ah, good. I'm glad that worked. Sometimes it doesn't really work out the way I thought it would. What does it do? What is on uh, Zakas' third surface thought? What does it do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind what of perfect, it? perfect echo two problem. Things. Yeah. <laughs> One, what does it do? And two... Is that going to get flagged at the library? Is Emerald going to notice? Oh my god, what have I gotten myself into? So it's like curiosity and panic at the same time. So that was a lot of surface thoughts. But... <laughs> the mark will fade in time, although all of you will be able to see your own and each other's. And some of the initial effects will fade as well. Uh, I suspect you've heard something you didn't expect in your own minds. That is only because of the initial connection I've made between all of you. In my experience, teams need to speak subtly, and this should allow you to do this. It will also let you know where each other is in case you are in danger. Excellent. It will also be part of a ritual that I will show you now. This ritual be able to do once each time you sleep. Well, each time you will need to sleep again before doing it again. I don't do these very often. But it should help you. Then he holds up his own arm, and you can see that he's got a deeper version of the same burn, almost like he had it burned four times in the same spot. This is your binding to me. Do not be alarmed. I will not press you for anything. But it seals our bargain and allows you a modicum of my power. In this ritual, you will invoke me. In doing so, you will be led to my remains. Here, you would sense me as I am. He looks up at his giant form. But on your own plane, it should lead you to my heart. Take caution. It is not precise all the time. The further you are, the less precise it will be. But show it a map, perform the ritual, invoke my name, and you will have guidance. Are there any other questions before I show you the ritual? So 
symbols. This reminds me of a thing with symbols we had. Uh, it just popped back into my mind, and in Zacchaeus' mind. I'll minor conjure, uh, minor conjure, you know that little cube we had that had the symbol of mm -hmm. Arvax and... The thing that I have somewhere no, I thought person? No, I Kuzima took it. Yeah, Kuzima. Oh, Kuzima had, had, had it. Back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is this? We had it with us earlier, and our friend disappeared with it. He scowls at it. A mistake. Well, it's I no was longer here. fooled into an alliance, and it didn't work out. But this thing, it, it's not some key. It doesn't. It doesn't unlock anything. Or? It is, and can. It is a, a binding, not entirely unlike this, mm -hmm. between all of those entities. It can be used to communicate with them and with others of their kind, others who hold them. I don't know if that has much power left in it now that I've broken my part with it. But be careful of those others. I think they still work with Arvax. Or at least are aligned with him. Understood. Dismissed. Who are the others? I think there was a wild hunt for one of them, and like, because there was something in old druidic. Mm. There was Arvax, old druidic writing that I couldn't decipher. Maybe, maybe else Sarah could. Um. Because, uh, out of character, uh, we had identified two of them, but there were two that we didn't yeah. know. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see if I have... As I remember, so I can see her thinking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm very glad that she remembers. It sounds like pages. <laughs> I forget some of these things. In their minds, everyone hears... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. <laughs> Trust you guys to bring up something that I that I threw in. Right. <laughs> it, it just pops he, back in. <laughs> Heat damage, remnant of divination magic. Give me a second. Three dryads. <sighs> In a, this is probably an excessive request, but a, do you have any bags of holding by any chance? <laughs> there is very little that remains of magic here. Understood. Mm -hmm. I have nothing like that. We'll acquire another one somewhere. Where are we here? The other danger is I sometimes change my ideas, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to be consistent with myself. If I, I, if you want to say he just tells us two other factions, I mean we don't know yeah. much about that's perfectly fine. Um, well, one of them you will recognize. I'm just trying to remember its name myself. Um, please wait while we boot the universe. Well, Processing. That's uh, not it. Yeah, Wooden Paturo, Arvax, Wild Hunt, maybe, and then a fourth one. Yeah, the fourth one you wouldn't have recognized, but he knows what it is. Oh, I wonder if I have it written under that name. Mm. No, the He's thing is, like, Freyan. yeah, the Doctor is an evil person mm. in my universe. Mm -hmm. uh, It's, it's one of those things like, I named it a couple of different things, and did I use the consistent name in my notes? And my notes for this game are, ne are pushing on about 400 pages at this point, so. I'm only at 100 uh, I'm in two books. Yeah. If you'd like to pre-order the book. Uh, <laughs> you think I can get it organized <coughs> enough. That's cute. The graphic note. Um, Old Fentac or Sutra. What's the art? Okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, yes, so. Uh, oh, I was poisoned by old friend, I forgot about that. Um, Iron Bomb producer. So, um, one of them was the symbol of Arvax, which you'd seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably have to change that part. Um, but one of them, he says, uh, he gives the name Verdoba, which if any of you have religion, you could you could uh, make a check on that name. That's one. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um, Lots of so. druid. Give me a second. Uh, Fucking dice. Eleven <laughs> on the dice. Okay. Um, None of you are familiar with the name, but... Um, oh, that, that goes sure to 18 library. for me. Oh, okay, sure. So, 11 on the dice. It was yeah. just funny that it was and double actually, ones. And actually, it is, it is <laughs> most appropriate that you are aware of it. Um, 
because it, uh, where is the thing here? I'm sure the library has uh, something on it. Even before he has a chance to say it, and weirdly enough, echoed in each of your minds, you you feel slash hear uh, uh, Elzera's voice slash thought. Um, because there are legends that would follow the Druids as well. And Verdoba is one of those legends. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of names given to the class of creature or, or thing that exists. Demiurge is one of the terms that's used. Um, primordial force. Uh, the spirit of entropy. Sometimes another one that's described in terms of the druids, they would typically refer to as the corruption of nature. That was one of the conclave that he describes. Um, the other one I have to find him. May I just point out? Oh no, did I actually list them all already? No, no. Um, that I'm looking at my notes here, and we have been in real time in the shadow for exactly a year. Whoa. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's Told going you to been a while. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see, where are you? The the fight that brought us to the shadow was December twenty third, and uh, yeah. Where so we got going? the name of the place December thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Exactly year old. That's that's so weird. <laughs> so weird. Just saying. Uh, where is that person? I don't have him listed there. Okay, I have to do a search here to find another person. Because there's another name which uh, all of you would be familiar with, strangely enough. And it's not Paturo. <laughs> and it's not Paturo. Paturo's name is there, and he does identify his his version. It's different from the symbol he gave you. Um, it's almost as though that the symbol he gave you is the is the purified version of that. Okay. Um, See, my thing is, I remember, I remember this, and I remember one of them was in messed up druidic mm -hmm. that I had an actual saying, that, like full saying for but it. But the name Verdoba is what actually that, that that's translates what that to. what that one was? Okay. Um, it is more of a phrase than a name, but that would be the concept name, essentially. Okay. Uh, is it there? Wow. I, I'm a little shocked by the fact that it's been a year in this place, <laughs> let alone how long the game has actually gone on. Y'all, we've been playing for over three years now. By the way, I can't believe I forgot to mention that when it happened. <laughs> okay. But yes, this is me trying to remember so I can give you the actual... Um, nope, that's not him either. Okay. Uh, I need to remember the councilwoman's name. Councilwoman? Yes. Um, that I would have. Uh, for Andrew? Alexa for Andrew? No. Yeah. Something like that. Alexa. For Andrew. The other problem is, how did I spell that in Elvin? Um. Oh, okay. I cannot help you with that one. <laughs> Okay, four sides to a thing. There's Arvax, there's a Druidic that's twisted. There's two more. Clark recognizes one. Which would probably be Arvax's. It resembles the thing that tried to drag him into, like, that watery place oh, in the yes. fight before. Yes. Okay. Alexia Ferendril. Ah, that's what I was looking for. Oh, the councilwoman that got killed by the cult of Arbax? Uh, nope. My list of shit that's in the bag of holding. <laughs> we apologize for this strange diversion. That My bad. Do. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope, it's... <laughs> this is three years of notes we're going through, y'all. <laughs> this is... I'm, I'm trying to remember how far back I have to go for this, too. Oh, this fuck, I just lost the page. Also, did we all remember I have a horse somewhere? <laughs> I have one, but I'm pretty sure I left him back in Vetour. His mm -hmm. name was Ezro. They're probably both in a stable being taken care of. Oh, Separate yeah. stables, but... <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're not in any state of quantum Okay, flux. well, I'm not going to find it at the moment. Okay. The person I'm looking for... <clears throat> uh, 
uh, I believe, was allele flepharendral when he turns mm-hmm. up later. Right, uh, when he was like the balance guy. Yeah. Yes. And I, I'm Top, trying to remember. Topsy guy. Yeah, I don't remember what. Uh... Um, that gives me. And there was only four sides to it. Um. Uh, yes. Okay. That okay. gives me a more precise thing that I might be able to help here. That's what I'm trying to do as well. Uh, Elio. Uh, okay. Raise. Of course, I just called it the Great Balance. <laughs> yeah, the Great Balance. So that balance is maker. that is the fourth symbol as Baturo identifies it is the Great Balance, um, which also is described as a demiurge or a, a a being of existence, primordial being of the balance of the universe. But as you recall, what Elil has said, uh, Elil was a, a, a warlock uh, tied to its power. But Elil was also worried that if it actually succeeded, the world would stop anything. All would be perfectly balanced. Nothing would ever change. And that was its ultimate goal. Uh, not because it had any malicious intent, but that's just simply its existence. Uh, and tapping into a small amount of the power was something extraordinarily useful for him, but he was also afraid of it. Okay. So the Great Balance, Arvax Paturo, and what was the druid's name? Verdoba. 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 And I found that in my 2018 notes Woo-hoo. from... From uh, September of last year. <laughs> so, or actually October of last year. So, there you go. Yep. Real time, <sighs> y'all. Yeah. That was, that was unexpected and difficult. <laughs> <laughs> that was unexpected and difficult. But yeah, he ad- identifies all four of those. Uh, and he would say that uh, Verdoba, um, he would describe as the demiurge of, of, of entropy. Um, but you know it as the corruption of, of nature. Um, nature being the natural enemy, essentially, of, of entropy from the druid point of view. Um, yeah, I'll have to do my notes as well. I have to watch this episode again so I get the notes right. There you go. And are so, the other three still working together? Or does he not know that anymore? Um, he explains it when he left the conclave. He does not know what they did. Um, and that's why he doubts this has any power because it still has his symbol on it. Okay. But he does know that they are, if they stayed in the conclave, they found a fourth. Okay. Um, the great balance would demand a fourth because it requires balance. So what they filled it with, you do not know. But we have an idea. You may, yeah. So, I actually have it written out but I'm going to just mm-hmm. briefly describe what the ritual is. Okay. Yep. So, uh, and I will actually end up giving you each a copy of it. Because I just see a page and a half long. Um, but that's just because I'm, yeah. So actually I'll hand out copies of this. Just so that you have all the information on hand so I don't have to repeat it or you'll have it on reference. Step one, Emron sucks the life out of everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. There is um, no step two. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm done. <laughs> so oh, the, the idea is it is a, is a ritual that can be performed is pr- primarily because you have that connection to, to Paturo. Uh, people who do not have a connection can be involved, but every role involved in the ritual at that point is made a disadvantage, regardless of who it's made by. So it can be done in a press by, by a fourth person if you don't have one of the four of you there. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, uh, it is intended to be because of that connection. The symbol that he's given you will only go away in three cases. Uh, death, and that is, per, that is the, sor- the soul is removed from the mortal plane. So if you are brought back to life before that happens, it, it might still persist. The final death. Uh, the final death, essentially. Um, the, uh, it will go away is when... Is this written somewhere? Sorry. Hmm? Hmm? Is this written on here? I thought I included that note, and I may have deleted that note. Cool. I'll write it. Okay. So one. Because I'm also looking for it and realizing I don't see that on there. I may have gotten rid of that. Well, on death, uh, on the uh, destruction of the heart, or on the return of the heart. So those are the three conditions under which this will stay around. There are three roles to be accomplished throughout this. uh, Three R O L E roles. I regret having used that word doubly here, but that's the way it ended up going. Um, there is the summoner, the chanter, and the guide. 
The summoner's responsibility is essentially summoning the power of uh, Paturo. So to uh, Zacchaeus's eyes, mm -hmm. the first part of the ritual is very similar to the demon summoning you've done before, but not intended to summon the demon in body, only in power. Mm -hmm. The second role is the chanter. The chanter is uh, calling out, uh, appealing to the power that's guided. Uh, and uh, there's particular roles associated with each of these three things. And then there's the guide, who takes the energy that's given and centers it where it needs to be. The primary way this would be used is over a map. So if you have a map, you can use the ritual to essentially douse over the map and determine where the, uh, the essence is. The more detailed the map, the more detailed the prediction. If it's not on the map, the ritual fails. So if you choose the wrong map, then it's going to fail. Uh, the uh, if you choose a map of the wrong scale, it makes it harder to make precise. Then you kind of have to ask what you're looking for. Essentially, looking for whether what region it's in, what island it's on, where on the island, what city it's in, and if you know the city, what building. So you can get that precise. It does take a minute to cast this, and you can only do it once per day. At the beginning of the, of the ritual, you have to draw blood across the symbol, and that is to give power to allow this process to go. So, mechanically, there's I don't know why I ended up doing it this way, but I did. Basically, because it takes a minute, there's ten possible rounds to succeed in. Mm -hmm. Those three roles have to be done in order, so you always do summoner, chanter, then guide, then summoner, chanter, and guide, until you have the necessary number of successes. Uh, and usually I think it's four before two, four successes before two failures. Critical success or extraordinary success give advantage to the next role. A critical failure takes away one success. So it's risky. It is obvious. You have to be chanting out loud that you are, are appealing to Paturo. Keep that in mind wherever you decide to cast this. Uh, and it is a ritual only. There's, there's no instantaneous version of this. I'm thinking a loud tavern, possibly next to a concert. I will have anyone trained in Arcana can make a roll. 18 plus... Hold up, hold up. 32? I wasn't really going to have you make a roll, but I figured it was going to be fun to have a 32 out there. <laughs> or like a 1. <laughs> thinking about the ritual, mm -hmm. if you were able to codify this... Mm -hmm. You know there's some other directions this can go. In particular, you've heard of an extraordinarily powerful spell called Gate, which is used to summon a creature from anywhere. Now, this one's very specific and requires a bit of connection. But if you were able to work on this spell, there's a few other things along the way you could actually develop. It would probably improve your summoning chances, too. And I've heard about the spell before because... Where is it? I think you've run across this spell before. So do as soon as I can, like, organize my spell books. <laughs> Yet another case of having to, uh, oh. to go through our notes. But, he guides you through the steps of it without the energy being drawn. He doesn't ask you to, to, to do the cutting part. Um, now, the three rolls can be done by the same person. It makes it harder, mm -hmm. uh, in part, that that, say, that one person has to be, not only performing all the rolls, has to make the three sacrifices as well for each of the three rolls. Um, so that's one of the advantages of having multiple people is it spreads out the damage. Not that it's a huge amount of damage anyway, but it's also harder. Each roll is made a disadvantage after the first one. In Tarsal Practices Spellbook? There was a gate, a gate spell in there. I couldn't understand it at the time, but like if I just go back and read it. And thinking back on it, and think, looking at the, the ritual that he's laid out, including the symbols that basically he lays out on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, kind of dripping the blood into the space that you need. Um, Congratulations, you're learning magic. No! <laughs> probably, probably. Now, it doesn't require all four participants, yeah. so it is possible to back out of this. However, a fourth participant might give you the diversity you need, plus also potentially uh, not have the risk. 
There's also one called Plane Shift here that's level 7, so I, I, whenever I have, I have free time, I can probably Ooh. learn this one. Awesome. As in, if we return to our world, <coughs> Finn. <laughs> See, I'm just missing the, you know, tuning fork that's required for that, but I oh, already right. know that. <laughs> um, I'm literally just missing the equipment for it. Yeah. And we could all be done then. <laughs> well, keep in mind yeah. that this is a very special plane. Yeah. Um, although it has been opened up to multiple incursions, it is essentially built like a prison. Yeah. Um, and there aren't supposed to be numerous ways out. Yeah. Now, after taking about an hour to run through this and making sure that you've all got it memorized, Zakis has it memorized instantaneously, really, and you're already kind of probably making notes about, you know, codifying it and then... Hmm. What if I did this, and what if I did that, and what would happen? Uh, <laughs> you know, how how could I change this to my advantage? Um, the uh, once he's satisfied that you all have that, the dwarven form vanishes uh, this time, um, and then again creates another form. This one is not a form that most of you are familiar with, although Clark would be the most familiar. It is an orc that stands before you now. Still with the horns, which is a little discongruous, uh, large tusks, mm -hmm. um, but uh, although his voice seems quite clear nonetheless. And uh, he stands before you once again. I wished to take this form because I have missed my people. I believe that the four of you are capable of tremendous things, but alone you will fail. You will need allies. Choose them carefully. And may Paluxia shine on you. And there's an emotion in his voice which is pained and almost like a long lost memory suddenly awakening the equivalent kind of of, of the emotional equivalent of having a, 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 a pinched uh, vein or blood vessel and your, your hand is slowly coming back to being felt again after you've almost forgotten it was there but it was out so long that it's cold and, and, and you can't move it properly and there's all those pins and needles which strike you but even though you have that pain you know on the other side happiness might actually come back to you that is all in that moment of anguish now and he waves his hand and the two metal braces that were holding Finn's feet break and fall away oh thank whatever the hell I have to thank he steps up Hitero? kind of rubbing his ankles. God. Nope, don't like those ones. Right. I'll just thank... Entr no, no, maybe not this play the comp company. I'll thank me. Thanks, me. That's better. Good job, you. Now, um... You will get them to where they need to be? Yeah. But, uh, first of all, where exactly do we want to be? I'm assuming we don't want to come back directly in the library. No. What it doesn't about exactly work that way. How does it work? Can we, we can't just all concentrate on a location? Not really. Is he lying? I don't know. You can roll an insight I mean, check. Would it be insight or arcana? I guess I mean, like, I know I, I would have a vague, a vague idea of how those things work. Okay, arcana would be if he's wrong. Okay. Insight would be if he's lying. Okay, insight. not necessarily the same thing. Come on, insight. Do better than my 15 plus 5, I think, so that's not a natural 20. Yeah. Okay. He's not lying. Mm. I'm dropping his zone of truth, too. So how, okay. how does it work? I, I'd like to tell you. And that would be telling. And I never tell. I'll, I'll find out eventually. I will ask no, you won't. Paturo. I know that you don't necessarily want people leaving, but for us to return the heart, we will need a way back. I when you have it, contact me. A way will be made. Okay. Do you have a message for your people? Hmm. If I happen to meet any of Where's this war going on? Clark takes out a piece of paper out of his pack and a piece of charcoal. I will keep the message simple. Live well, 
die better. Oktar Logar. Um. It doesn't that one. From Warcraft. Oh, okay. That's the orcs. I will ask if there is a way to get back through the mirrors. If they are not blocked, it may be possible. They were not. They were not intended to be passages. Merely a way to see one another. Fair enough. But they open possibility. I was just more thinking where we know where the other mirror is. Mm. I am having the other one brought here so that at least I may see. Currently, it is like blocked off in encased in gems by Thylestra. At the bottom of a sunken temple in a mine. Oh, we can access it. I will owe you all a great debt. But if you fail, there will be nothing. Understood. Mm-hmm. Nod. I'm ready. Are you all ready? I hold my ring a little bit in fear. Very well. And he backs up and the form dissipates. Finn, the voice from around the room calls. Begin. I thought he'd never ask. Actually, I knew he would ask. I just thought it was going to take so long. Just do it. Want, if he wants to lie, he has to make a save against 17 or 18, whatever my save is. Uh, That's what the uh, Zone of Truth does. Yeah. Yeah, um, he's not lying. He's just sort of being playful with language. Mm-hmm. Seventeen. Sorry, I'm not as good as that. Now, let the piper tell you a tale. And he pulls his hand up, and suddenly he's holding a uh, a a tin pipe, a tin uh, whistle, and he plays a little little sound. And the sound seems to grow and echo and reverberate off the walls. It's not a true tale, but that shouldn't bother. You see, the very <laughs> essence of the universe is nothing at all. Arcana and check is not true. <laughs> you can make an arcana check. Fifteen plus fourteen, so that's it goes against everything you know. The world exists, things exist. Yeah. To him to call it nothing means nothing. There's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. See? But he's not lying. I put a spell up, he can't lie. Well he's also not telling the truth. Not, I couldn't let you resist the spell. With that <laughs> um, it's, it's it's a weird sensation because yeah, you do know if they're resisting the spell, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, basically, when it, when I put it up, he would make a resist a roll to resist it. If he does, yeah. I know. The the weird sensation is that he's not lying because he told you it wasn't true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and it's a, it's a weird sort of twisting thing where it feels like he's skirting around this by by kind of transforming. His language is necessary. Yep, he's a fae. And he starts to to to, he knows this shit. to whistle. And he blows a few notes and blows a few notes and then he pulls a whistle away and the notes are still floating around, almost as though he's layering a little bit back to I guess uh, doing some overdubs and a little bit of, of uh, looping. The, the looping going on. Yeah, as he starts to dance around all of you. Now, follow my steps. That's all you need to do. Because if you don't, you'll never make it through. This is the way that you will survive. Or at least maybe that you'll thrive for one more day, maybe two, maybe three. I can't really say. I can't really see the future, you know. It's all beyond me right now. But we're going to get there somehow. And he starts to move around you and dance. And he's he's telling you to follow in his Mm -hmm. steps. I follow. So who's in first? Me. Okay, make a performance check. 23. 23. You find the steps confusing as they cross over each this other a lot. And you can see that the, 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 the sand around your feet is getting twisted and turned up. But weirdly, it seems to be of a pattern. Hmm? Um, danced before. Yeah, who's next? Clark? He just yeah. rolled a nat 20. Yeah. Uh, 21. Nat 20. <laughs> to you, there's something almost like a fighting style in this. 
Um, it is dodge and weave. It is move out of the way. It is it is be appear to be off balance, but actually be secure. It is uh, you know see the weakness and thrust upward underneath their defenses. It weirdly takes on this natural rhythm for you, and you've seen some fighters do this rhythm, but you've never found it applicable before, and suddenly it kind of locks into step. Who's next? This is how I die. <laughs> we all know me and charisma rolls. Wait, it's a charisma roll? I thought it was like it's athletics. Performance. Performance. Okay. performance oh. is charisma. Yeah. Wouldn't it be acrobatics because you're like following? I mean... Dance is performance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how complicated is it to, to do this and do something else? What sort of something else are you trying to do? Show show you show some her? show some moves. Um, I will say you can aid her. Okay. But the next time you roll, you will be at disadvantage because okay. you're fine. distracted a little bit. That's fine. I, so aid is just giving her advantage. Yeah. Or giving her a four count, you know. Of a persuasion. You don't have to roll. You don't have to aid. roll to aid. Oh, well, you there's just have to best. do it. But right. basically, the impact is going to be in the next roll. So. I mean, he did also roll a net. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Oh, he's 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 groove into this. This, yeah. this this is now practically part of his permanent repertoire. Okay, that that brought my uh, ten to a twelve. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're having difficulty with it, and it's very frustrating as an elf. I have because zero talent in anything to do with the arts. But, but just let me still, have my tree. <laughs> these things should come naturally to you. And you know, Amrun, okay, you knew he was a performer. He's done performance before. To see the half orc <laughs> stepping through this as if he's born to it. It's frustrating. You find yourself misstepping a little bit, and you also all find yourself kind of twisting and turning in these S curves that sometimes twist around each other. So, bringing up the rear. Okay, so if I have the feet keen mind and I just saw Finn doing steps and observational learning is a thing, can I use that as advantage? <laughs> it's still a physical performance, Damn though. <laughs> That's a five. Ooh. Total five? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not seeing where this pattern... It's completely chaotic. It makes no sense. Even the pattern they're leaving behind, I mean, it looked like a glyph for a moment and then it crossed over itself. It's like, that, that's not right. This is not right. This can't be happening. If you have to happening. dance a teleportation circle, you have to go in a circle. Just FYI. And there are circles and there are twists and there are turns and spirals? How does a spiral happen? It's Teleport just not making any, any sense. And you find yourself lagging behind a little bit. So, the next round... You can try to do something different or try to improve it. You can try this to help. You're already get, you've already got your, your helping okay. going on. Right. I'm going to start, though, with, with uh, the first one mm -hmm. in the line, which is I'm ruined. So just roll again? Uh, it is going to be a roll again. Um, and it will also be a perception check. So the perception check is separate from the success of this roll. Okay. Uh, metal die is the perception check. I got a 13 performance and a 24 perception. Okay. As you're kind of coming around, you see uh, Zach is trying to keep up, and he seems very frustrated that his feet aren't doing the same thing. Or, I'm moving the right direction. Isn't that enough? And completely. Uh, <laughs> so you're a little distracted, although you're still able to kind of do it, and you're kind of able to see uh, how he's he's uh, failing, but also see where you're succeeding just barely. But there's something weird that's happening. Is There's a wind that's blowing that shouldn't be there. It's cool, and it's damp. And it's salty, and there's some sort of sound that you're hearing. It's it might be in the inner ear because you're whirling and twisting and turning around, but it it almost sounds like a wave, like a queen. So who's next? That would probably be, me. That's you at disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. What's what's the uh, is it still uh, performance? Still performance, unless right. you can think of another way to apply something else. Yeah. Because um, he said dance, but you've also recognized this is more than just a dance. Yeah. Um, I happen to know a little bit about uh, athletics. So perhaps there's a way for the mind to shut off and the body to continue doing the thing. Okay, like I like a, that. Like a muscle memory. I like that. Yeah. Because we've done one loop already. Yep. The yep. next one, and, should, and and one should be very similar. And your soldier. Yeah. Part of your training is to train the muscle memory to try to make it all a physical act. Just repeat the same eight count. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Twenty-five. Oh yeah, and at this point you're also kind of turned a little half turned to Elzera behind you, going no no no, left here, foot here, here turn there. pivot turn turn. Twist. And PA. <laughs> so. When he's putting it that way, could I try to use my acrobatics? 
to regain my sure. composure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, if you if you stop thinking of it as a dance yeah. and start thinking it of I'm trying to dodge or I'm trying to sidestep or you yeah. start to think, oh, you know, it's kind of like when I'm climbing a tree, and I need to make sure my foot goes here, but I got to twist a little bit to make sure that my balance isn't right, and then I got to twist a little bit. So I can I, grab that thing there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that teetered on the 20 for way too long. <laughs> that teetered on it and went to a uh, total 10. Oh, okay. It teetered on it, like, back and forth. Well, just as it teetered, so did you. You had the perfect step, and then <laughs> just a little bit leaned too far, and you take an extra step you weren't meaning to, uh, and you're having some difficulty. I need a perception check from the sure. actually. Sure. Oh, yes. Um, well, I'm going to roll that on the thing, sorry. Of course. Uh, the one that I have a modifier for. <laughs> 24. 24. Uh, mine is 25. 25. There okay. we go. No. You do have a very high perception, so it's not really out of yeah. question, although it's higher. We sure. saw stuff. Sure. So, um, similar to what I described for Amrun, you Seven. start to pick up on this, this strange smell <laughs> of, of, of water. And for you, in particular, the, the sea. it invokes time when you spent on boats. Mm. You, you weren't a, a sailor as such. But as a soldier, as a mercenary, you had had to go to different islands and they would be on board these ships. And the weird thing is now you start to think about the movements. And it was a little like training on board the ship, where the ship was moving and rocking and shifting, and you had to kind of maintain this weird stagger-like thing to, to, just to maintain a steadiness. Um, for you, um, it's, it's a little bit like the... Uh, the uh, I want to say the 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 was it Stone uh, Stonebrook? Is that the name of it? Uh, not far from where you grew up. Yes, something like that. Uh, and there was that that water that was always there. It was very placid water, but every once in a while a storm would whip through. Something you would find kind of an, a, a wonderful expression of nature itself, and it would whip the winds up. And you can remember the boats kind of dipping and shaking and, tw and twisting on those on those waves. And you feel yourself more like the boat. And that you're having to react and shift and change, and it's like, this doesn't, I don't how, wait, is that how this is supposed to go? Okay, now I kind of understand a little bit more. I understand water. In, in you now, but unlike, unlike uh, you know, him living water or him kind of uh, working with it, you're surviving it. <laughs> you're barely okay. kind of able to, to make that, but this connection is being made. Oh, yeah. So, but, but I can be water and I understand water. <laughs> That's true. Actually, you can also be water. That's true. Now, for Zakis. All right. Uh, so I get to use something else other than? If you can make a reasonable case, is how are you going to interpret this to something you're better at? Okay, so I, briefly, I saw, like, little sigils and writing markings. It, it out, seemed right? as though where the footsteps were going, it seemed to trace out a pattern, but every time you thought you knew the pattern, it violated it. Okay. Every time it looked like it was going to be a sigil, it changed somehow. But given, Does it look like anything I might recognize? Like any of the symbols that were like almost popping up. Are you angling for an arcana roll? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Where did I see all these symbols together before? Who knows? Well, that's a nineteen, so thirty something. Thirty-three. So every time he comes close to completing a symbol, it's almost as though he's deliberately breaking it. And then you kind of reflect back on what he said: is everything he's doing is a lie. So he's purposely making incorrect arcana symbols as part of the arcana of this. Oh, so it takes why? a shift <laughs> to kind of go, I, okay, I sort of understand, and then you start to see the symbol he's going to make, and then you see the next one, and you go, oh, I, I know the sequence of symbols. I, I know what this is supposed to be, or I have a feeling I know what the next one's going to be. So I will give you a chance to roll with advantage on the performance check. Okay, so in other I words... I you information, but didn't yeah. actually allow you to move properly. So in other words, forget everything I know about Arcana. Kind cool. Of, kind of. All right, and that's, again, performance. There's a 17 yeah. and an 11. I'll take the 17. All right. So what's the total? 17. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, he uh, has zero. Yeah. I have minus one. Uh, there, there you, go. <laughs> you guys are the best answers ever. <laughs> As you kind of uh, well, now well. focus on this and probably grimace every time you have to take a step, which cancels the symbol you just made, the other sensation you have of this, though, is a weird sense of building of power. So every time he comes close to completing a symbol, the potential magical power builds up, and then he harvests it without actually expending it in the symbol. 
Okay. And then the power builds up again, and you harvest it without expending the symbol. And you kind of get the sense of a growing amount of power as your foot sloshes on the suddenly very wet ground. And the tune gets louder and has this weird sort of lilting and then rising and then dropping and rising and then dropping. And then you realize it's not the sound of the pipe anymore. No. It's the sound of waves. And everything goes bright, blue, white. Everything glows for a moment. Your eyes are, are having a hard time uh, adjusting because you've been in this dim light for so long. And then all four of you feel a falling sensation as you fall down into a broad, wide ocean. Mm. Feather fall. <laughs> you got a costume. No, it happens out of the the amulet. Oh, okay. How how high up are we, and how much? But is I it think it hurt? only hits me. Uh, you find each of you find yourself kind of like falling for a second, and then drifting as a large wave comes smashing up over you. So each of you make a survival check to orient yourself in what is suddenly a very busy th- uh, rain or hey, seventeen wave. Uh, and by the way, Zach, is what you had experienced was the crest of the wave came up over your foot. That's why your foot was suddenly wet. Gotcha. Uh, even though you're still hovering somewhat. Two? Yeah, All right. survival's not a thing. There you go. No survival, so 17 plus... <laughs> Form survival is fake. 23. 22. Oof. Ooh. 16. 16. So the three of you kind of lean into the to this and kind of manage to orient yourself so it's when the feather body of yourself kind of moves. It kind of kind of glides into the wave. You end up head first into the wave and kind of deep under and find yourself sinking. Uh, the three of you see uh, Clara kind yeah, of I don't disappear. even swallow any seawater. Oh. <laughs> I can actually cast something that will help. Uh, yes. If it has a, uh, it a, a vocal or somatic component, that's going to make it harder to cast here. So there will be a roll involved, but if it doesn't, then it's easy enough. Okay, no, it will take an action, so it's not a... Uh, not a reaction. Reaction. Uh, yeah, it, it takes uh, all the things. Oh, never mind. Got to be able to see them. Uh, how far were we falling? Like, how long were we falling before we hit the water? Like Literally, like five, six feet. Okay, it but wasn't yeah. that far, but it was just a shock of it, and, and it looked larger because the swell of the wave was low, yep. and then it rose up to practically well, it touched his feet. So, yeah, no, then uh, we swim. Cool. We've been here before. It's fine. You, yep. you, it's true. You you did literally have been here. Well, not here before, but you've literally been in the situation before where you're drowning. Yeah. Although it's not hard to hold your breath, it's true. as it turns out. Well, hopefully there's no like tentacle beasts like uh, getting the water feels <laughs> remarkably warm and fresh and surrounding you at the moment is anybody helping Clark to I, I, I would yeah um, are we like can we touch bottom uh, you can try to go down if you want I'll just extend my feet and I'm the tallest one here so it's like do I touch anything no nothing at all treading water do, uh, do we see I a land turn anything? into a water elemental okay that works pretty easily uh, <laughs> underwater, can I see anyone else? But he's underwater. The rest of you have landed and kind of kept yourself on the surface. Unless you want to dive down. Yeah. If yeah. I look down into the water, can I see him? Uh, it's it's a little bit dim, but yeah, you can make it as form. It's a little I cast hard water to rock. Out. Okay. As long as he's within 30 feet of me and I can see him, he'll float to the surface. Okay. Cool. Uh, it is going to be an arcana roll because of the, the shifting waves and stuff. It makes it a little harder. I believe sure. it has a vocal or somatic component. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I while he's doing that I'm swimming towards him okay. mm. <laughs> I'm 13 yeah, yeah it's a little bit like tough and you, and you kind of end up with some some, some, uh, some water in your mouth but otherwise it's it's not so bad sure, the water tastes kind of salty uh, which is unusual but it, it does it is known uh, as you start to rise up out of the, the water and you see well actually you really don't see the no. water elemental at all um, kind of shifting towards you but you, you see him start to rise a little bit on his own Awkwardly, cool. kind of half upside down, uh, twisting in the water. Now you get to walk on the water. Congratulations! As you as you kind of, and now you're lying on the on the surface and thrown up by a wave. Uh, Clark would like to uh, expel whatever water just <laughs> right. swallowed. Well, uh, let's do an acrobatics roll for that one. Sure. Because I want to see where the timing hits on this one. Uh, Thirteen. 13? Yeah. So as the, the wave throws you up, you kind of like 
boosh, let it let go of the water as, as he's kind of end up spiraling a little bit forward and then thump, 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 land on the surface of the water, strangely, yeah. uh, as a uh, water, a, a bump of the water elemental appears beside you. Uh, make a perception check while you're up there. Sure. Uh, perception. Twenty-two. Twenty-eight. Possibly twenty-nine. So in slow motion, as you are twisting over and like <gasps> hurling out the water that mm-hmm. was kind of making your stomach a little sour anyway, you look up and is that a ship just over there? Splof. It's very choppy waters here, but you mm. you definitely saw a ship off in that direction. Not a familiar one, but then again, okay. you don't know many of them. Uh, Clark will point. I I see where he's pointing. Okay. I also see where he's pointing. And. After knowing the direction to point in and the waves kind of, every time they swell downward, you can see the ship bobbing on the waves as well. It looks like a fairly large one, a, 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 a main mast and a secondary mast. I'll be back. Uh, it looks like it has... Uh, <laughs> Bring the ship to us. Uh, numerous people. You can't really see from that distance who's on board. It's probably 100 feet away at this point. Uh, you can make it out pretty strongly, though. Uh, and they seem to be pretty busy on board. And, and you're swimming over? I will swim over. I have a swim speed of 90 feet. Okay. As you as you swim over, and I told Zach, "Yeah, yo, I'll, since I'll sw- start swimming this way, I'm going right. go." <laughs> I'll relay the message to my companions. As the uh, as the the bow wave of you tra- traveling through the water uh, hap- uh, occurs, you do see, hear a yell from way up above. Uh, someone yells down and is pointing down in your direction. As you get closer, you you uh, recognize the the kind of people. They're orcs. The whole ship is full of orcs. And you see another ship off of, in the distance. Uh, and then there's more more shouting, more crying, just as you're getting towards the edge of the boat. Uh, and oh, God. You, Are we in the middle of the what, war? What language do you speak? None. Okay. Oh, yeah, right now you don't speak anything. But, Aqua. Uh, Dr- Draconic okay. is the only yeah, you're non... Not, you're not picking up the, the, uh, the language, but it sounds urgent uh, as there's a... Sh- and then a massive explosion on the surface of the ship. Fire ignites the the sails. And yeah, we <laughs> start to think, oh shit, this is the war. And we're going to end it there for the night. <laughs> I start Thank you, back. Finn. I, Thank you so much. I, I realize what's going on. I start swimming back to my group. <laughs> well, I did have one thing I was going to do at that point. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use the mold water cantrip. Okay. And I am going to uh, shape it into a hand and animate it to go. Okay, okay. It's about so five, it, it only does like five feet tall. So you're putting up an, an, an ahoy uh, uh-huh. I don't SOS see what's going on kind of thing. There. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, I will have that on the record and I will, I will remember that. <laughs> so, I, as I see what happened, start turning back. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Let's you're get on board one of the winning ships. Yeah. Oh, and, and one more thing of note. You do not see Finn. Adam. Of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the asshole. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so we're going to end it there for this evening. Thank you very much for, for joining us. If you're watching, thank you very much, you guys, for playing. We were in the shadow for it's, one You were in year. the shadow for a year. I promised I'd get you out of there. It, was, it took me a little longer, longer but I, I did. Uh, although that might not be your last time in the shadow, depending on what happens. At least now you have a better idea. Uh... Also, uh, yeah, we are going to play again next week, it looks like. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Might actually stick to a schedule this year. Next week, of course. <laughs> That's anyway, the goal. Uh, yeah. we, we know we have a few uh, dates to miss already, one in January, uh, maybe two. So we'll we'll try to keep you informed. Uh, how would people stay informed, Marie, about what we do? I, I try to keep the <laughs> Facebook page up to date, but I can only do that when I know what's going on. <laughs> Fair, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people get sick, so we, we try to keep it as up to date, but stuff happens. And what Facebook page would that be? Uh, it is the Legend of the Drowned Isles Facebook that page that is uh, in the links somewhere. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, you also find a group called Watchers of the Drowned Isles. It's more of a discussion group. It's not a lot of activity at the moment, but if you have questions or, or if you want to know anything more about the setting or these characters, uh, I'd love to answer some of those questions. Uh, I'd have to find my notes. It might take me a year. But uh, I will do that. Go back and folks, but it does appear like we are back. Uh, just in time to say goodbye, really. But, yeah. um, we, you know, I, I need my closure. 
Uh, how can I get my closure <laughs> card? Well, slash Jody? here's the thing. Uh, if you're seeing us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you would like to, please leave a comment uh, and ring the notification bell. That will keep you informed and will also tell uh, YouTube to keep us moving and shaking. Yeah. And, you know, feel free to share. Uh, this is a, an experiment. Um, we've been going for... Two years now online. A few years. Uh, and <laughs> so lots of episodes. This is episode 40, by the way. Whoa. Which is kind of a neat little milestone. Last episode of 2019, but we'll return on the 5th of January uh, for some more tomfoolery. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be... We are in We got war. water. We got we water. In war. In a, in a, in water, a, wars, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. All kinds of fun I'm stuff. I'm going to write M water. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thanks guys for playing. Thanks guys for watching. See ya. See you guys next week. I'm waiting for the transition.